The podcast on Haunted Hill will contain spoilers and swearing. I am the devil, and I am here to do the devil's work. I saw this black on. Be one of us. I didn't tell you my name. Hang up. I didn't tell them my name. Hello and welcome to the podcast on Haunted Hill, episode 120. 120 minutes! Obviously that's two hours. This episode will be longer than that. Probably. Or will it not? We are reviewing Leprechaun 3 and 4. Hmm. Uh, I'm hey. your host, Gav, and I'm sitting here hey, hey. cyberly with... Cyberly, cybernetically enhanced. Yeah. yeah, who are you? That's just, I'm Dan. Dan, Dan the Leprechaun. Dan, and Dan Leprechaun Man. It is our Easter, our annual Easter special, Gavin. It is indeed. Episode 120. Oh, to be sure. That's a bit terrible. Sorry to all our Irish listeners. Um, I think it's fine. Let's jump straight into what we're doing and explain why we've done that voice. Uh, if you've been listening to us for years, you'll, you'll know. If you haven't, then that's fine. We're on our, probably, I think this is our eighth year now. So we started many, many years ago, um, an Easter special around about this time of year where we'd cover Critters and Alien because they both involve eggs we got through the whole Critters franchise we got through all the Alien franchise we even did a Donnie Darko movie um, and because uh, in the UK Easter usually falls around St Patrick's Day I suggested that we cover the Leprechaun movie the original one with Warwick Davis which we did we enjoyed that it was fun silly fun the following year we did a, a Leprechaun 2 uh, this year we're doing Leprechaun 3 and Leprechaun 4 in space. Indeed. And wow, Leprechaun 4. I lived so many lives. In I literally space. was ring Leprechaun 4 in space. You've got to Please give it its full title. In space. I was reincarnated as so many different things through that film. I can't believe uh, yeah, how many lives I lived through that movie. And it's only 90 minutes. Incredible. It's incredible. Incredible it's that 90 amazing. minutes could feel like 90 years, isn't it? It is absolutely incredible to the point when I, I was watching it. I was like, watching it, I'm like, oh, we're getting through this movie quite It's moving quite quickly, at least. I was like, and I was like oh, fuck it, let's have a look at all the time. I was like, 30 minutes in? 30? <laughs> and I was just literally like, what the fuck? I literally like, has something gone wrong here? I was really, really like, like that can't be right. Then I was like, no, that's right. Well, save, save, hold yep. your horses for the review. You know. That review's coming, guys. But this is going to be a fun episode. This is going to be Easter special. So not only can you expect some terrible um, Irish accents, we'll try not to do those so much, because it's probably not politically correct for us to do that. Uh, but, 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 but it's only really in jest of the leprechaun, so it's not too bad. Yeah. It's not, not, it's not, you're not being disrespectful to anybody. No, we love our Irish listeners. You, you guys know who you are. And uh, we, you can also expect, because it's our Easter sort of special as well, lots of egg-related puns, can't you, Gav? Exactly. Oh, excellent. Well it's done. It's pretty much us just saying egg on the beginning of certain I know, words. it's ridiculous. It's, that's Bill, it, and we've done it at like eight years running. Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. That's, yeah. I don't even know why I've said that. I think that? I think when you're younger, you kind of get like, you are who you are. It gets ingrained to you when you're eight, nine years old. You're, you're taking everything in around you, and it makes it who you are, you're, the different places you are. I assume that that stuff that makes what who you are, you keep that going through life, as you do. That's who you are, that's who I am now. We are the same people. So our jokes will never change. No. Our yokes, <laughs> sorry, will never change. Oh. And they will carry on. They will. And I exactly. think the reason, that, the reason I have all these puns built into me is because as a young lad, I used to read uh, the Beano and the Dandy comic books, which, which aren't... Of puns? aren't they did. They're not like so. For anyone who doesn't know, for any of our listeners out of the UK, they're not like superhero or comic books or anything like that. These are like comic strips, almost like Calvin and Hobbes, um, Garfield, that kind of thing. But these were like aimed at like boys, mainly boys, but also girls, probably around about ten years old, maybe a bit younger, maybe a bit older. And you had like Dennis the Menace and Desperate Dan and all these kind of characters, and there well, were loads of puns in those. 
Uh, well, many many people know of Dennis the Menace. Oh yeah, of course. But there's two Dennis the Menaces. There's, there's Dennis the Menace, the American Dennis the Menace, the blonde ah, guy. That's what I was. And then there's our Dennis the Menace, oh, who's spiky. I'm, I'm, that's hair. what I was thinking then. So I am wrong. Possibly. Which is why um, the Dennis the Menace movie, mm. when it came out over here. Um, starring um, Christopher. If you've just uh, if you just tuned in, <laughs> <laughs> this is the Dennis the Menace podcast. Welcome to the Beano podcast. Um, that's why when the Dennis the Menace movie came out over here, um, they changed it to Dennis because there was already a Dennis the Menace in the UK. Uh, okay, there we go. But anyway, that's um, where my puns come from. Excellent exactly. Stuff. Exactly. Exactly. One hundred and twenty. Yep. Uh, welcome, listeners. If you've never listened to us before, uh, we are your hosts. We uh, we do jokes. We say <laughs> we do jokes. <laughs> we don't fucking do jokes, do we? <laughs> we just say nonsense yeah, and uh, uh, we talk to you about stuff. Um, <laughs> Daniel, what have you been well, up to? Well, before we do that, oh let's god, there's quickly, so much to talk about on this let's intro. Pe- let, let's pepper uh, what else is the show? You know, what else is okay. coming up within yeah. the show? So. Our two main reviews are Leprechaun 3 and the classic Leprechaun 4 In Space! In Space. Yeah. Made back to back, released the following years. Um, and we've also got Time Team. Now, I'm a bit worried about Time Team this episode because we're going back to the year 2020. And. Oh, God. That was. I, I, I'm going to be interested to the cinema next year, that's for sure. Le- yeah, so. Mm. Let's. Uh, <laughs> That, that's what we're doing and then that's time team we'll go back in time to the year 2020 when, and, when uh, Covid actually hit I was just thinking about the other day I literally thought about lockdown because when lockdown actually happened that worldwide lockdown when nobody knew what the fuck was going on everyone's like as confused as each other um, and there, there was a part of it I didn't actually mind being like, like I can't go to work I literally cannot I'm not allowed to go to work the government are going to go and give grants to self-employed people okay okay so it's literally I cannot go to work there was a, was a little part of it was like oh I'm going to make a miniature house and I'm going to put on some movies in the background and I just do you know what I mean I sort of adopted to it anyway I was going to film, go out and film shit and I never did because I thought to myself well, nobody wants to be reminded Hmm. of then why do I make a documentary nobody wants to watch it unless in um, in 20 years they might want to watch it but not nobody who lived it really wants to be reminded of it I'd, I'd imagine so like you're, we're going to go back to it though aren't we so you know we are um, and no disrespect to anybody who's lost someone from Covid or during oh, the no, pandemic absolutely but, no, no, of course but I did find it initially a bit exciting just because We'd never, obviously never seen anything like it before. I had to continue going into the office because I was classed as a key worker um, in what I do. Um, so for about two weeks, I was still going in. And I felt like Jim from 28 Days Later, you know, walking in. There was no one around. It was so weird. And uh, me and Alice would just sort of be, you know, working from home. Suddenly we were both working from home. And I was, I was smoking cigarettes back then. And, uh, God, we were just smoking. Like every 20 minutes we were taking a cigarette break because... We didn't know what was going on, but we also started drinking quite heavily as well. Oh, so God. It, was, it was a weird time, man. It was it a was, weird time. It? Yeah, that's that, that's what made us want to have babies because we came out of that. We both cut back on our well, we both quit smoking, and then we both got back on our drinking. We were like, you know what, life's too short. Let's let's start a family, and here we are. So, <clears throat> but yeah, so that's what we're doing for Time Team, and then of course Bill Murray will be joining us to introduce our lovely segment, World of the strange which we look forward to every episode and bill is serving up some whiskey uh, some what's that you've got there my my tie my ties calf i don't know what that is is that a cocktail i think it's a is it a cocktail he's saying it's a yes it's a cocktail right okay thanks to bill for flying over so talking of celebrities like bill let's get into some news gav there's been some news there's oh, some things going on there's so many things going on well should we start off with um Let's start off with... We don't want to age the episode, but at the same time, no. some of these things we do need to sort of just chat about, really. Well, let's start off with a couple of films, because uh, we, we, in the intro, we normally talk about films we've watched. So I know you recently watched Studio 666, which ties into a bit of news that's happened very only in the last day or two. Yeah, totally. Can you just lift your screen back a bit so I can see your face more? Can't see oh, the top I'm of your so pants, s- man. Sorry. It's um, a bit weird. Hello. Here I am. Hello, mate. That's better. Um... Yeah, Studio 66, obviously uh, made by um, the Foo Fighters. Now, I discussed this last time, so if you didn't catch the last episode, I went to watch this film. Absolutely loved it, which is a good segue into 
X, which I was going to kind of briefly talk about without spoiling it, just my trips to the cinema. I absolutely loved Studio 666. Um, and I thoroughly recommend it, but it's made with, by a- actors who can't act. But anyway, the, the, the strangeness of it was what the, the drummer. Post. Yeah, the Foo Fighters drummer, Taylor Hawkins, died only this week. Um, I think he was 50, I think, something like that. Um, guy did a lot of drugs, and from what, I re- from what I've read, there's a lot of narcotics in his system, but it's not- there'll be an autopsy and it'll all come out, but... Um, well, we can't speculate that anyway. So, but, yeah, um, I'm just re- reading what I read Regardless the news. of the dude, the dude passed. So it's a bit yeah, weird um, seeing him in the cinema uh, being killed as well um, about um, like a couple of weeks before. It was strange, really, yeah. really strange. And they and just released someone... the album, which they made. They, there's a fake metal band in it and make an album. Uh, ah, Dreamweaver right. and they've just Foo Fighters have just released I think under the name of possibly Dreamweaver an album some of the songs are from that album and um, that movie and they were good they were real heavy and what will be weird for me is as I haven't seen Studio 666 yet when I do watch it there'll be a different vibe for me I think for a lot of people when it comes on it'll become a rental quite, quite in the fresh. next couple of weeks yeah yeah not so a lot of people still going really going to the cinema yet and uh, not that, 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 that that's anything at all, but it would probably have more sales. I expect like, more people will probably watch that film. It doesn't matter about sales. More people will probably watch that film now with that going on. Well, and it's you know, just quite spooky. I need to watch it again as well because it'll be the same for me. Block wall. It's not the same. It's not the same, but it's like The Crow, Brandon Lee, yeah. or um, Batman, uh, Dark Knight Rises, or Dark Knight, um, yeah. whichever one it was. Uh, you know, the, the Heath Ledger died. That made people want to see it more you know and it's a good legacy to these people you know it might be a nice legacy to to, to taylor i love love the film and i want to cover the film with you one day as well i'd love to watch it um it's in that genre we talked about it's in that genre of metal uh, yeah yeah yeah. you know we've covered a couple of those already with trick or uh, trick and treat sorry trick or treat there's a there's loads there's loads of those films so yeah we could do that anyway yeah so there was that um, and then you and film. you watched X, didn't you? As well, well, yeah, I went to the cinema and watched X. And I was just c- totally confused with uh, cinema nowadays. Um, X is Ty West's new film. Obviously, I like Ty West's film. I didn't like the, the Ty Western he made. Uh, I the have John not Tra- seen that. The John Travolta film. Um, it's not very good. Um, I do like his movies. Um, Sacrament, House of the Devil. Um, you know, innkeepers. I like those films, and um, I've never seen the Roosters. His first film. And I enjoyed that. Oh, I've not seen it. I need to watch it. And I didn't like X, and everybody is raving about it. And so, so I'm totally confused. I'm totally confused with cinema because I went. Um, I really love Studio Six and Six, and and that's kind of gone under radar. And um, that's got like five out of ten, maybe on IMDb. And I really like that. <laughs> Um, but I just didn't get X really. It was, I didn't feel there's any story. Um, a lot of people raving about it, and I don't, I, I don't understand why. Is it's it's well produced. It, the setting's okay, but the, I didn't. I felt there's no story. I like, literally no story. Like, well, the, 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 the vaguest of stories, and there's a kill scene in it, and it's just, I I knew exactly what was going to happen. Like it was so obvious I've seen it in loads of horror movies so that made me go like think oh maybe it's a younger audience who haven't seen that many horror movies do you know what I mean because I yeah. just found that there's no story or nothing but they were raving about it and funny enough it kind of got me to actually um, uh, quit Facebook this month uh, this the other, this month the other day um, about a week ago actually I just I just like oh, I was just reading some of the stuff people were saying then someone was saying oh you can see kid some some guy in it called kid Cuddy, cutie, kid cutie, yeah. Uh, you can see his penis. You can't. He's, he's standing there at night time. It's a silhouette, and he stands there, and there's a, a big penis between his legs. But it's a silhouette. It could, it's probably not his penis. It's probably just a, 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 a like a prosthetic. Um, and then someone said, "Oh, you can see a penis." And someone commented, "Oh, I went went to look at type it up on the internet on Google and ended up saying, oh, this is could be child por- pornography because he's called Kid. I was like, oh, no. And I was just like, oh, fuck it, that's it, I'm out of here. I don't want Facebook anymore. I just, I just don't. <sighs> it's just bollocks to fuck it, fuck all of you. It was just, I don't understand why it's getting so much praise. But each to their own. And I, I always come across as a negative motherfucker. It's, a, it's on my list to watch at some point. Um, I th- agree with you. I think there are a lot of young... 
I don't think it's just a young audience. I think there's a lot of young directors coming out as well. Um, and but Ty West, know, Ty West, I've, I like his films. That's the trouble. It was like it was like going and watching us after what after Love and Get Out. It was like that again. Like oh, here we go again. But I think the other thing is we are seasoned horror movie fans. We've been watching it for over you know almost forty years, yeah. and we've seen it all. That not a lot surprises us anymore. No. You know, so so I don't. I go into every film and every movie. You know, I love my shitty shark films, and I go into every movie knowing that I'll probably find something that entertains me, but nothing really will surprise me. Yes. It's not often something does. I think *Malignant* was one of the most last films I watched where I was blown away by like what that is. I did not see any of this coming. I need to watch it actually. Yeah, that's really good. Um. So yeah, I, I just felt like that's a shame, um, man. Yeah, no, totally. It, it looked lovely though. As soon as it started up, I was like, "Oh, this looks like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre film." It's in that world and that vein, exactly that. Um, it looked nice. I just didn't like it because there's no story. The antagonist, uh, sorry, yeah, the antagonist was just not a scary antagonist. It was just like, oh, that's it, is it? <sighs> I just felt there's nothing there, no substance. And, and, you know, going back to what I said in our last episode, for anyone that didn't catch our last episode, we briefly talked about, I think it was last episode, we briefly talked about the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which was released which straight I to enjoyed. Netflix. Yeah, me and you both thought that was, you know, they got a lot right with that, in my opinion. Yeah, I um, didn't really like that Laurie Strode alike who uh, turned up. I yeah, that's a bit un- un- definitely... unneeded, but um, I kind of enjoyed that film. I enjoyed it yeah, more, I I enjoyed it more than X. I'd probably go back and watch that at some point in a few years. And you know, it's, it's, on, about it's, on porn, it's about a porn movie being made. Why, why wouldn't I like that? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, I've watched two films. Uh, before we get into it, some celebrity news. I've watched two films, uh, both from 2021. Um, one of them I've been wanting to watch for a long time, and it actually was delayed due to COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think you might have seen this. Antlers? Have you seen Antlers? No, I haven't. No. Sarah uh, said okay. it. She said it's good. Yeah, really good. Uh, really interesting it's got it's about the uh, Wendigo um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to give too much away really but because I got the babies I actually fell asleep about an hour into it um, not because it was boring just because I, I was absolutely shattered see because... this is this is me you go back to our first episodes <laughs> I know, I know. and I was always falling asleep in movies you're like how do you fall asleep in movies this is why <laughs> it's because I'm up at 5.30 every morning because they, they want to get up um, yeah. but yeah so I actually the next day I went back and I was like you know what rather than just start from where I left off from where I start I am I'm going to start the whole thing again oh good on you and Oh man, it's good. And, and actually, this time around, I picked up on even more. So I almost watched it one and a half times. Really, 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 really good fun. And funnily enough, I did exactly the same thing with the other movie because I fell asleep an hour into that. Uh, and I'm so glad I watched it from the beginning the following night again. And actually, Alice watched a lot of it with me and said, this this, this seems really good. And that was Werewolves Within, uh, which yeah. I thought was really good. And actually, would have made a great pairing with... Um, uh, what was the one we did for Christmas? Well, I can't remember what it's called now. Yeah, Ooh. no, yeah, the other one. Yeah, yeah. Um, Werewolves uh, Within. You've uh, seen Snow that. Hollow. That's right, Wolf of Snow. Uh, Hollow. Yeah, no, uh, Werewolves Within. It wasn't too bad. It was a kind of a murder mystery thing. Well, it wasn't too bad. It was better than the average film. It had a little bit more I, going for it. I thought the main sheriff in it. He, he's not uh, too bad, is he? He was so funny. He really had me in stitches, and I thought the girl was really cute and really funny. Their chemistry was so good, and I didn't expect the twists in it. Um, the characters are all so well written. It's the closest thing, in my opinion, the closest thing to Shaun of the Dead that America has done, because uh, it felt very British in its humour. Um, I highly recommend for anyone who hasn't seen Werewolves Within. It's on Netflix UK. Check it out. It's really, really good fun. Um, um, uh, I wouldn't go as far as saying it's good as Shaun of the Dead, but I completely get what you're coming from. It had, oh, I'm not it saying it's more... good. I'm not saying it's good. I'm saying it's as close to Shaun of the Dead okay. in like that feel of comedy and you know feeling sarcastic. Felt, felt yeah, no, it was. It was uh, quite snappy dialogue from all the uh, the townsfolk and stuff, going back mm. and forwards. Their their repertoire it's stuck yeah, in definitely. stuck in a uh, stuck uh, in a situation. Um, yeah, it's not too bad. Um, it's not bad. That's yeah, right. Yeah, I thought it was. Excellent. You could do a lot worse, that's for sure. You could watch Leprechaun Fall, you know, in space. Not actually watch it in space, like Jeff Bezos. I mean, like, has he gone to space, that one? Probably. Isn't, is it, uh I don't know if he had. Let's say Branson. 
like Branson and Shatner. Sh Branson took Shatner up in space, didn't he? Why, why would you? I'd take Mark Hamill. If I was going to take someone up with me, it'd be so Mark Hamill. It, yeah, instead of Star, Star Trek, you go Star Wars. Mind you, yeah. if he was still alive, I would have taken Leonard Nimoy because I'd feel really safe with Leonard Nimoy. You, you know, would, he would. He'd put his hand on your shoulder and you'd look out to the stars and he'd say stuff to you and you'd be like, absolutely. In that voice of if, his. If he puts his hand on your shoulder, you're knocked out. Possibly because oh yeah, he's a Vulcan, isn't he? Yeah. No offence to any of our Vulcan listeners, but I know that you guys, um, you know. Yeah. There we go. Right, celebrity news. Unless there's anything you've uh, else you wanted I, to... I, I watched Jason Goes to Hell uh, oh, yeah. Jason, Friday Friday of 9, because I was listening to an interview with the director, because I've, I've done a lot more work recently. I can actually listen to a few more podcasts. So I've been listening to some podcasts, some skateboarding ones as well. Um, <clears throat> also fractured my rib the other day at skateboarding. Oh yeah, <laughs> tell us about that. Uh, I just went skate. I went skating uh, two weeks, uh, two and a half weeks ago now. Actually, and I still can't get back on the board. And I was skating really well, and I um, uh, felt really good. Uh, my ankle felt really strong, and then I got cocky and was trying to do three sixty kick flips, and just did some real weird disco move. Bent my t big toe on my right foot right back, and the pain of that overshadowed the pain of my ribs which didn't appear for a few more days until the pain of my foot went so yeah that was fun that's not our celebrity news though guys no, um, well unless you class me as a celebrity <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so let's start off with some sadder celebrity news but news that i've heard rumors of over the last couple of months and um it's now been confirmed and that is that bruce willis is indeed stepping away from acting because it's been confirmed that he has something called aphasia. Yeah. Which is essentially a form of uh, dementia, which it's been sort of rumoured over the last few months. Uh, and even as, I remember about a year ago, it was rumoured that he was losing his mind. And I'm not being derogatory when I say that. Um, but he hasn't been acting himself for the last five no. No. maybe 10 years you know he's he's appeared in interviews very strangely he's, he's been quite rude to people sometimes he's you know Kevin Smith the notorious he fell out with him he's actually apologised to him now Kevin Smith and quite a lot of people who've worked with him and said he was difficult have now apologised and said gosh we, you know we didn't know you you had this so for anyone who doesn't know aphasia it is a very it is a, in the family of dementia and some of the symptoms are um, speaking in short or incomplete sentences uh, or you just say things that just don't make any sense in the situation you'll just say a sentence from another part of the day in a situation you're in um, you sometimes mix up your words and you get one word like you might say orange instead of gav for no reason and that's not going to help remembering lines and no. delivering them um you might make up words that you think are real and they aren't real and you won't understand other people's conversations and you can't write so essentially all it's all to do with uh it's a type of dementia that affects your language and your speech almost like you're getting like supercharged dyslexia but in speech as well, it's really sad, actually. And, yeah, because of that, Bruce Willis is, is from what I see, is retiring from acting. Um, which, you know, we've recovered, we've covered Bruce a couple of times. We we did Die Hard 1 and Die Hard 2 this Christmas just gone. And He's got uh, six or seven movies in post-production at the moment. And that's the other weird thing, is that he's been making... Oh no, because it's not, it's not a weird thing though, is it? Because he's been doing it to try and make money for his family and stuff. Well, I was going to say, he's been making more movies than um, Nicolas Cage, probably, you know, straight, it, straight to stream. Because there's a, there's, you know, he's on a bit of a clock, so to speak, now, and I'm trying not to say that in a sort of horrible no, way. No, you're right, and this is this would explain why yeah, a lot of the films he's in, would... he will turn up for one or two scenes, Yeah, because that's all they could really get out of him before, you know, you know, you can imagine how many takes it might take just for him to get a couple of sentences, right? Oh, no. really and, sad, it, really. and obviously, there's that time I mentioned, like, uh, I put something on the Facebook saying, what are you going on, Bruce? Because I was just like a picture, what the fuck? And someone... Uh, one of our listeners but like, we'll leave him alone and we can't say that sort of thing and I wasn't trying to be horrible I was just trying to say like I just want the old Bruce Willis back but now this kind of explains it and like yeah. you know yeah um, it's, 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 it's shame, rubbish because he's I love Bruce I've loved Bruce Willis and so he's such a good character actor though he, he really does have range like you can look through loads of his stuff and he's like yeah he has he's, he's not Jason Statham you know he's Bruce Willis yeah. he's, I mean uh, John McClane is he can do comedy character. or 
he could do like he, he never really did horror so to speak so to speak did he He's, well he did he did signs um yeah it, it's kind of I'm sorry not a, signs um uh, uh sixth sense yeah it kind of touched upon it i suppose a little bit but um not full-on horror but anyway um yeah he, he action obviously die hard's my favorite action film um and he did a lot of good stuff in the late eighties and into the nineties. And I love, you know, one did film I really albums. love. Did some yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. Um, married Demi Moore. Yeah, yeah. I, I was bad. going out with a girl once <clears throat> at um, secondary school, and um, it was early in secondary school, so I was probably what thirteen, fourteen, maybe. And um, I hanged out around at her house one day, and we listened to a Bruce Willis album on record. Amazing. Amazing. Oh, I don't. I was just like, wow, this is crap, isn't it? I don't well, think we'd lost. We're not. We're not ruling him out now, but, you know, straight away. But you know, we are sort of saying that that's what's happening with Bruce, and you know, he's had an amazing career, and I'm glad that he's retiring, and you know, as graceful as he can. Yeah. And he's. He seems like his family and friends are all very, very supportive. Yeah, totally. Of and course, like, you know. like, he's done a lot of a good movies, so we've got him to live on. On. Yeah, and we're at the point now hmm. where. We are going to see a lot of our heroes passing away, you know. Stan Lee died a couple of years ago. Now, he's obviously one of my heroes, but that's expected. He was in his 90s, but you and I are both in our mid-40s, so we are going to see... I know. Jackie Chan, Arnie, Stallone, all these guys that we grew up watching, they are going to start dropping off, and it's going to be really... I know. Oh, God, I can't... (laughs) I know, but it's one of those things, though, as, as we get on with Clint, though. This is a good segue into uh, our next topic, actually. Um, you start to see things Clint has said over the years, you're like, oh. <laughs> yeah. And uh, funny enough, in the Oscars once upon a time, he, um, uh, a Native American lady, was on stage trying to say, look, we would like a bit more respect for our people on film from now on, like doing it in like, a speech thing. And she was getting booed. And um, uh, Clint Eastwood got up after her and said, uh, oh, I suppose am I supposed to say, like, uh, we give a bit of props to all the dead people in the John Ford movies? Is that what we're giving respect for now? Completely just so rude and disrespectful. It was just like, yeah. wow. It was one of those shocking moments of the Oscars. Segway! Shocking moments of the Oscars. Talking of your heroes, now... Uh... I have been a big, big fan he of... He got into one little fight. His mum got scared, Gav. <laughs> uh, I've been a big fan of Will Smith, or The Fresh Prince, as he was back in the day. I was probably about 10 or 11 when I discovered Jazzy Jeff and The Fresh Prince. Cassette tape someone lent me it at school. I had then... sex in a car to, on the radio, it was playing uh, Getting Jiggy With It. Oh, you legend. At least it wasn't Big Willie style. Um, that might have come on next. I'm not sure. yeah. Boom shake the room. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, big fan of Will Smith. Always, always I would say I've actually always looked up to him because he's always held himself in, you know, in what high regards. He's not, you know, he doesn't swear. He swears in his movies, but he doesn't swear in his raps, you know, and he's, he's a bit... A bit like Jackie Chan in some ways. He's a very clean-cut image in, in a lot of ways. He, he, and, and a lot of people have looked up to him, especially kids and stuff. Especially, and I, um, I'd imagine, um, uh, some younger people of around his sort of neighbourhood and stuff probably looked up and went, oh, wow, yeah, like, he Philly, did that, what know, he did. Like, fucking hell, you know, that's and, amazing. And, and, and young black kids would definitely be looking up to him as well. You know, he, he's, you know, he shows you, you know, it doesn't matter what colour you are, you can smash it. You know, he's, if you put his name on a poster... They're going to sell movie tickets and i even got i'm pointed over here not that you can see me but I've, i even got his biography for christmas from alice um it's just called will and i'm about halfway through it and he talks in there about how his dad used to hit his mum and all that kind of stuff you know it's very sad but also very um gives you that kind of like wow you know he's got through so much now again we don't ever want to uh date stamp the the, the episodes but this week it was the 94th i think it was oscars and uh, Chris Rock. He's not funny stage. anyway, really, Chris Rock. I mean, Rock. Chris Rock is funny sometimes. But... He used to be funny. He hasn't been funny but for he, a while. He got up on stage randomly to uh, give the, the Oscar for best documentary. He said it's a, he said it's a bad joke as well. And it was about a shit film, it's, talking to Bruce Willis. It was about joke. a G.I. Jane. It's, it's a shit it? joke. Really, he it's said, not even uh, a joke. He said something nice about Will, I think. He said something like, I, plea- I hope it's Will that Will Smith that gets the Oscar, or something like that. And then he said, and that was his segue to say, 
and Jada. Loving the hair. Looking forward to G.I. Jane 2. And she just rolled her eyes. Will, eyes. Will, Will laughed awkwardly. <clears throat> she rolled her eyes and gave him the nod. What yeah. happened next, Gav? Uh, Will Smith got ghetto on his ass and uh, stormed up to the stage with Chris Rock going, oh! <laughs> He went, uh-oh, uh-oh. uh-oh. <laughs> and uh, Will Smith that's goes my, up. That's my Chris Rock. Do you like and, that? <laughs> and uh-oh, uh-oh. Will Smith obviously played Muhammad Ali once. Uh, Will Smith sort of turned slightly sideways and boom, I thought he was going to punch him, um, but gave him a big old slap to the face, I... which Chris Rock didn't move from the spot and just looked at him like, what the fuck? And that was pretty commendable. But it got its worst because not only did physical violence happen, which a lot of people thought was fake. And I was still, oh, for about 24 God. hours, I thought it was fake. So frust- no, it's so frustrating because everybody's just now, or oh, then other people saying, oh, it's staged. I fuck off, everybody. You stop thinking everything in the world is staged, for God's now, sake. To cement how much, how angry Will was and how yeah. that moment, he must have, he must have just blanked out. Uh, it's but, not the typical thing you imagine Will Smith to do. That's but then for sure. He, he sat down and uh, Chris then, Rock said, then, yeah. Chris Rock said, I just, Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. And then like, he looked it, it to is, the side of the curtain or like, stage going, what, 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 are we, are we doing or something? What? Yeah. And, and then Will Smith said, yeah. keep my wife's name out of your fucking mouth. And Chris Rock went, whoa. And he went, keep my fucking wife's name out of your mouth. And Chris Rock just went, I will. And then he said, Right, and he tried to get his words out. So he out. must have carried on, because I didn't watch the Oscars, so he must have carried on with the Oscars then. He tried to announce the nominees for Best Documentary, and got a bit muddled. I think they went to commercial break. <coughs> and then Denzel Washington, uh, Bradley Cooper, and a couple of other people that Will Smith... Oh, Jake Gyllenhaal, some of Jake, uh, Will Smith's very good friends, all sort of calmed him down. Now, it's come to light only today that he was actually asked by security to leave the ceremony. Uh, and he said no. So what, did they just go, oh, OK, then. Well, oh. well, hang on. If you've asked him to leave and he won't leave, you get the security in and say, get the but, fuck but, out. Gav, this is the power of people in Hollywood, this isn't is, it? And, and which is why they shouldn't have fucking power. Ridiculous. <laughs> and also leads me to believe that he knew he was getting the Oscar. Because then, dear listeners... Not only did all of this happen, but then later on in the evening, he and then... his only Oscar for acting that he's ever won. So, like, if he was to know that, or at least he knew he's up for his, such a weird f- behaviour. Well, he won his first Oscar a few, like, half an hour later. But like you say, Gav, exactly that. Like, the, the, that should be for me. That if, as a fan, I would have been so happy for Will I'd have been like oh fi- finally like yeah that should have been think his moment think he's and... a silly comedy rapper and he is but he also he can really act yeah. I'm really proud of him for getting an Oscar but now that is completely overshadowed by yeah. this fucking weird bizarre thing that he's done yeah. and it I don't understand mm. anyway we're a horror podcast and it is a weird we thing it is a weird thing that happened and well, I think it's it, important it, to, to mention that oh absolutely it, it, it is um, it's such a bizarre thing um, to happen especially and it is in the world of the movies but it's just I don't know it's not un- unprofessional and you know there's other things going on but in the world um, that, it's not yeah, yeah, so, but, yeah. but you know um, you've got now you've got Jim Carrey who's come forward and said something about it you've got Chris Rock did his first show in Boston yesterday uh, he got a stand up uh, um Everyone stood up and gave him a round of applause, and it made him cry. And he said, I'm not ready to talk about it yet. Yeah. Um, but apparently him and Will were dancing later on that evening together. So I really don't I know. I don't believe that. Um, and um, <laughs> I don't believe that at all. That's what I've read. Uh, I can only no. say what I've read. No. And it's just really weird, really strange. It is I, bizarre. I, I, I don't understand it, and I'm really gutted, and I'm let I feel let down by Will Smith. You sort of mentioned the, the the side of it being the lady, um, women, and their hair and their looks is quite important to them. So um, how dissed I can understand how dissed she felt in that room with that joke. Like yeah, and but also something I wanted to mention, um, and I I don't want to, I ne- would never condone violence. Mm. But 
but there is a stigma we've talked touched on this before with men's mental health mm. um will smith has clearly been going through a breakdown publicly over the last year or so he's had to sit there during an interview and be told by jada that she cheated on him yeah, what was that, uh, all that shit about? That's just fucking weird. You know, uh, and and why, pe- is that, why was that all public anyway? Pe- because they're trying to do this like we're like, you know, everything's public, everything's on the table. But you shouldn't do that public. Well, there's, that there's, there's talk of them being Scientologists, isn't there as well? And I, I don't want to bring that into it, but I don't know. But, but basically he found out about that and everybody thinks they've got an open marriage, which he denies. It's not, it's their business whether they have or not. Um, he's just finished playing, uh, uh, King uh, Richard Williams, the ki- the father of Venus and uh, uh, Venus Williams and Serena Williams, who is a violent, passionate man. So he's obviously engulfed himself in that role. Um, and I do think that Jada knows how to push his buttons. I'm not saying he's, you know, he got he made that decision to get up and hit Chris Rock. But I do think that I saw a really interesting meme which I shared the other day, which was. Tyrese Gibbs from the Fast and the Furious movies is people joke and take the piss out of him because he cried online because he hadn't seen his daughter for two years. Um, the same thing happened with Kanye West. Shortly after his mum died, he was diagnosed as bipolar and went online saying, I'm going to become the next president and start crying into all the people in the in the press room and people made memes out of him and gifts out of him. And I just think we need to perhaps I think have a think about mental health not just for men but generally because like we discussed we joked about the Hollywood world and how it's a weird bubble but man people need a break right like you, you're not right in the head if you get up on stage in front of your peers and think you can just slap your one of your colleagues essentially in the industry you know at the same time Chris Rock perhaps shouldn't have made that joke you know um, but I do think there's a more more of an issue here than just I'm not making light of it but then more than of an issue here than just a slap there's so much more to unpack with this yeah but like Will Smith's mental health but but at the same time though that that there's many people with mental health issues but he shouldn't uh, he may have that and he doesn't still excuse what he did publicly live on TV though uh, like someone should have stopped him or something even the academy should have I don't know I guess they didn't know what he was going to do but anyway anyway Kareem Abdul-Jabbar put out an amazing tweet um, for those who don't know he's a, a very old now basketball player he was in Game of Death Bruce Lee um, yeah. basically saying that the incident has let down not just Will Smith's fans, but um, young black children who look up to Will Smith, mm. uh, black people generally, women, um, people within the Hollywood industry. And it, if you want to go, I'm not going to read it out because it's very long, but if you want to read it, just type in Kareem Abdul Jabbar tweet. And it's the most recent tweet he's done. And, you know, it's a really big tweet. Everyone's going on about how amazing it is. Uh, and it really just brings home how disappointing it is what happened, really, for many reasons. Not just that I'm disappointed that one of my heroes did something like this, but also that he was in a position where that could just be allowed to happen. Like, he shouldn't have been allowed on the stage. It, it's just so it's just so weird. But they didn't know what he was going to do. Anyway, let's get off this now, because we were on a fun thing ending. We were... Wow! That was our Leprechaun episode. We won't talk about that other stuff again, but it is weird. I am in... I lost very much. I am interested in see what's going to develop from this, though. Yeah. Well, yeah. if anything, from what I know, is he's going to be moved with his auntie and uncle to Bel Air. Exactly. That's what happens when you get into one little fight. Apparently, he'll whistle for a cab. I'm going to take him there. Yeah. Anyway, we've got to talk about a little person dressed as a leprechaun. Warwick Davis. I don't think he'd ever slap someone, would he? He might do. Might need a stepladder. Now, that's not a rude joke. Oh, God, Gavin. Keep my wife's name out of your fucking mouth, okay? Is, is Robert Davis your wife? <laughs> yes, he is. You're my wife now, Dave. <laughs> I like him short, and I like him Irish. He's not even Irish. He's not. He does the worst Irish accent ever. But 
Okay, I think that's the roundup of everything. That's the intro sorted. That's Will Smith, that's Bruce Willis, that's Taylor Hawkins. That's films that we've watched. That's Easter in a, not in a nutshell, in an eggshell. And but, that, that movie, Eggshells, I watched in the cinema, which was Toby Huber's first film. Is the only movie, I think, no, not the only one now, but was the first movie, or only movie I'd ever walked out of. Toby Huber's first movie. It's fucking appalling. Good for you. Hmm. Well, I, felt, I felt bad though because it was there, and he would have seen people walk out. But then again, yeah, you know, make a better, make a better movie, Toad. Then what are you up to, mate? It was his first movie. It's a student film. Well, there we go. Yeah. Okay, so I think we should, we need to go chronologically here. So uh, let's have let's step into a trailer for Leprechaun Three. There's no subtitle on this one. Just Leprechaun Three from 1995. Trailer. Take it away. Las Vegas. A gambler's dream and a dreamer's paradise. They're all about to meet their worst nightmare. Look out, Vegas. I'm taking over. Now, the leprechaun's back in the city that never sleeps. <laughs> and he will never rest until he reclaims his pot of gold. Belongs to me, this gold I smell. Whoever's got it's going to hell. Yeah! I want me shilling. Hello? <laughs> if we destroy the gold, we get rid of the leprechaun once and for all. <laughs> leprechaun 3. The third time's the charm. So, Leprechaun 3, or as they say in Ireland, Leprechaun Tree. From 1995. An evil leprechaun finds himself in Las Vegas, where he proceeds to cause mischief by killing people, granting twisted wishes, and infecting a young man with his green blood. There's your elevator pitch. I'm sorry? There's your elevator pitch, I said. Oh, right. I thought you called me a bitch then. No. I thought you were going to slap oh, me. Give me some... No, there's your elevator pitch. Give me some money to make this film. Yep, there you go. Thanks. Directed by Brian Trenchard Smith. I recognise that name. Uh, he is directed. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't really know what he's directed, really. Lots of stuff, but nothing that you could sort of. Uh, I mean, he directed Leprechaun 4 in space. So that, there's that. But uh, other than that, it's been a lot of straight to video kind of things. So that's probably why. You know, that's probably why, you know. But yeah. there we go, Leprechaun 3. So 1995, so uh, I, I don't know if the second one, but I should imagine the second one had a theatrical release in cinemas. This one was straight to video, um, as were the rest of the series. Um, BMX this... Bandits. Did he direct that? He made BMX Bandits. Good lad. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, great movie that is. Um, so yeah, this one continues onwards. Now it adds a little twist in this one of it almost puts a bit of werewolf um ness into it because he bites a boy at one point who then starts becoming a leprechaun doesn't he yeah it's weird it is weird now i must say this film has not aged well for two reasons both racially mo racially charged one of them is obviously warwick davis isn't irish anyway and his irish accent is isn't great at the best of times but also when he bites the boy who starts turning into leprechaun he then demands everything potato it off the menu oh which, right yeah well that's, yeah it's just that's just not really needed is it it's not there's also a poor indian fella in this who gets some real native racial, american no no indian he's oh, an indian sorry. chap yes. who gets uh, some real uh nasty comments from the leprechaun really a couple of times uh, he bites in his ear and says, oh, I, oh, spicy, I like Indian food. Oh. I thought, oh, that's a bit much, really. I must have missed that. Yeah, it's I'm, right sure, I'm sure I've missed a few of these bits of this movie. Well, luckily for you... I've got... <laughs> luckily for you, luckily for me, we're going to go back through the fucking thing. I've got, I've got some notes and... I've got, I've got some notes and I've got some quotes. I bet you have. Yeah, I well, knew you well, would be. When it was happening, I was like, no, he's taking these down. Yeah, I've got some notes and I've got notes and quotes. That's how I roll. Notes and quotes. Right, go on in. 
Right, so let's kick into this. So we start off with Irish folk music playing over the credits, so you know it's a leprechaun movie. Now, actually, I have got a lot of fun with this one. Um, I watched all the It wasn't too movies. bad. Yeah, I watched them all about five or so years ago, and this was one of the ones... This is probably one of the last ones that was decent. I can't remember the In the Hood ones, which we'll be doing next year. I can't wait. <laughs> but we start off with Vegas, and we, we're at the Pawn Palace, which is a pawn shop in Vegas. And we get a guy walking, Gav, who's got a few disabilities, hasn't he? Do you remember mm. this guy? He's got one eye. Yeah. He's got one hand. And he's got one leg. Brilliant. Don't know what's happened to him. Don't need to know. Don't need to know. What we do, what we do realise is he's got with him a great big leprechaun statue. In a sack. In a sack. He says, oh, how much for this? And the Indian fella's like, I'll give you $20 for it. He's like, no, 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 no. Hang on a minute. He's like, no, I'll give you $20 for it. So he does. And... There's a good luck charm hanging around its neck. And the guy, the one-eyed guy says, just don't, whatever you do, don't touch this medallion, all right? Of course, what does the Indian gentleman do? He takes it off and thinks it's really worth, worth some money. Puts it on himself, in fact. I he thought, wears it. I thought he, he was going to turn into something or turn stone or something. He's obviously a fan of... Uh, Is this continuing from the last one? I, I can't fucking remember. I don't think it matters, does it? Nah. Okay, but I'm he's a... obviously a, obviously a fan of medallion men from the eighties. So he pops on this and he's like, oh, "I look pretty good in this. This is all good." Um, but that means that the leprechaun then comes to life, and he turns around, and where the leprechaun statue was is now a big pot of gold. Yes, and he's like, "This is my lucky day. This is fantastic. Not only am I wearing a badass medallion, <clears throat> but I've got a pot of gold here." Mm. Unfortunately, he's immediately attacked by Warwick Davis as the leprechaun. Now, one plus side gab, I must say, is the makeup remains very good. The makeup is actually all right in this. Yeah, it's really... He's quite terrifying with some of the close-ups. Like the wrinkles and the eyes and the teeth. The teeth especially look great. Mm. Mm. But he does bite this Indian fella, and that's where he says... Oh, spicy food. I like Indian food. And I just thought, oh, God, you didn't need to say that. We find out he's afraid of the medallion. He is. He is definitely afraid of the medallion, which is how he got turned into the statue. I'm assuming if you put the medallion around his neck, it will turn him into the statue. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming. I don't know. But uh, he gets his shillelagh, which is a little Irish stick, and he batters the shit out of this guy's legs. Uh, And then he bites off his toes as well. Yeah. Uh, with a little rhyme, I can't remember what it is now. Probably something along the lines of "I see your eyes, I see your nose." Now I'm going to bite off your toes, or something like that. Um, I don't know. He also says a little rhyme that says, "There was an old man of Madras whose balls were made of fine brass. So in stormy weather, they both climbed together, and sparks flew out of his ass." Yep, he does that as well. Uh, so yeah, bites off his toes, beats him up a bit. Fred in the medallion, so uh, he escapes with his gold. And that's, that is your opener right there, Gav. That is the opener to this movie. It's a catalyst for Leprechaun's mission to get his gold back. <laughs> it's like the Terminator, this movie. It's instead, exactly like the Terminator. Instead of John Connor, it's a pot of gold. It's, yeah, and it's Robert Davis instead of Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's kind of like twins, really, isn't it? Now, we meet Tammy, who is very sexy young lady who's broken down in her Volkswagen Beetle and she's you know what am I going to do my car's fucked she puts her thumb out and she's almost run over by Scott the geek and the chemistry is incredible would you are you being sarcastic I am indeed (laughs) (laughs) there's a line in this film that the boss of the, the casino says to Tammy who's played by Lee Armstrong, he says to her, you'll never work in this town again. I'll make sure you never work again in this town. <laughs> Do you know, this was the only film she ever made. So he almost predicted that, that she would never make another film. She, she quit. This is the only f- I thought I'd never she seen quit. it before. Well, I've never seen it really. She hasn't people. even got an IMDb picture. Okay. She's quit acting. She made Leprechaun 3. She was like, either she, she either thought... I can't do a better film than that. That's the pinnacle of cinema. Or 
and bear with me on this, or she was so just depressed. Uh, she, it's but. weird. Do you think she's just one of those, I'm going to go to Hollywood, I'm going to be a star, and she got managed to get a role? Yes, I got a role and did this. Or, um, I don't know, it's weird. Her acting then, it's, it's almost like I wish I'd known this before. Her acting wasn't too bad for the only thing she's acted in. I thought she was pretty good. She she reminded me a little bit of Nancy from um, Nightmare on Elm Street. I and, find it interesting. It must have been a horrible experience for her. Yeah, no, maybe maybe it was actually. Yeah. Mm. Um, so yeah, Tammy's almost run over by Scott. He he looks in her under her hood and he says, <laughs> "Have you ever blown a rod?" <laughs> <laughs> But she says, how dare you? And he's like, no, 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 I'm talking about your engine. Um, and uh, she says, look, I'll give you 10 bucks for a ride. Uh, it's, all, it's all all kind of innuendos in this, isn't it, what you're saying there? Yes, there's a few of them in this. Um, so, cool, he gives her a ride to Vegas, which is where he's going anyway. You know, he's got his, he's on his way to university and he's got his check. And we'll get, come back to his check in a minute. Leprechaun's done a bit of computer work. Well... Before that, the guy from the pawn shop, because this is a 1995 movie, he's like, you know, I don't know what that little creature was that attacked me, but I think I've got a CD-ROM in my drawer. Which will explain exactly about it. Oh, hang on, here it is. Leprechaun. It's called Legends of and Folklore. Let's pop this in my CD drive. So this is so 95. Loads it up. And this little cartoon starts up. Oh, would you like to know more about leprechauns? Let me tell you all about them. And he he, research, he basically sits there and researches leprechauns and gold and all the ways to kill them and trap them. I mean, come on. It, it's just... It's, it's genius slash absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it's... You decide... Yeah. Yeah. It's like you sort of choose what monster it is. Oh, because yeah, he was looking up earlier, wasn't he? He's like, oh, what, which one is it? Oh, Leprechaun, that's the one. Click it. Oh, okay, cool. It explains all about it to me. Like, I yeah. want that CD-ROM. I want that CD-ROM. It was very, very early 90s. Now, the Leprechaun, meanwhile, is elsewhere, and he's counting his gold, Gav, and he counts 97, 98, 99. Uh-oh, his hundredth gold piece is missing. Yep, so he's on the hunt. He is on the hunt. He is on the the big old hunt. Now, Tammy happens to work, who we met earlier. She works at the Lucky, Lucky Shamrock Casino. And this is, for me, this is the fun element of this film, because she's a magician's assistant, and the magician is fucking ridiculous. I love him so much. You're you a, a fan, fan of Fazio? Uh, he, 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 uh, there's one bit which I think's fucking incredible when he kind of dances across the stage. <laughs> yes. It's literally amazing. It's up there with uh, uh, Napoleon Dynamite. It was just like, this is incredible. The way he moves, I was like, I want to do that. I want to get that his, bl- his blue baggy sleeve shirt and that haircut and go for it. So Tammy is actually a magician in training. She's like, she wants to be a magician, but at the moment she's just the magician's assistant. So she's basically all about getting her in her, you know, getting her boob showing and getting her legs out like it was back in the 80s and 90s. You were a David Copperfield assistant. You just, you know, yeah. that's what you did. Paul Daniels had Debbie McGee. Whoever you were, you had a, you had a sexy female assistant. You know, this is before the hashtag Me Too movement. It was terrible. Um, but there we go. Now, the leprechaun decides to hide his gold in a safe. Hmm. Why wouldn't he? Oh, it makes sense, doesn't it? It does. He's a sensible young man. Well, he's not He's not young. He's very old, actually. This hundredth gold coin is found by the Indian fella. And he gets a gun. And he thinks, well, here's my, uh, my coin. Here's my gun. I'm going to protect this. I'm going to be rich from it. Because he knows the leprechaun's going to be coming back for him at some point. Because he's read about it on Folklore CD-ROM 95. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like we're making this all up, doesn't it? it? It does. It really does. Scott. You wait till we get to Leprechaun 4. Oh, Jesus Christ. There's a lightsaber in that one. There is. That's interesting. Because Warwick Davis was in uh, some of the Star Wars movies. <clears throat> yeah, don't give him the right, though. It <laughs> doesn't give him the right. It's not like he said the N-word or something like that. It doesn't give him the right. Do you use a lightsaber? You can't use a lightsaber. <clears throat> <laughs> it's 
not your right. It's George Lucas' right. Get written confirmation from George Lucas, please. You need that from the beard. You need one of his beard hairs sent to you in an envelope, <clears throat> and then you're okay to go. Yeah. So, so Scott says to Tammy, oh, you work in a casino? Can you sneak me in? She's like, well, absolutely not. Like, don't be ridiculous. You're underage. And also, they're the sin of their den of sin. You know, people lose their whole lives in these casinos. Go on then, I'll sneak you in. So she sneaks him in. And he walks in there and it's oh it's so exciting, isn't it? It's There's lots going exciting. on. There's lots going on in there. Um We do cut backwards and forwards quite a lot because uh back in the basement, um, the Indian guy is he's hunting for the leprechaun because he knows he's in there. And the leprechaun makes a statue. Don't know how he does this. Makes a statue fire an arrow at the uh, pawn shop guy. Oh, stops the bone arrow statue. In yeah. yeah. He, uh, he makes it shoot an man, arrow. And, man, uh, you've had so many notes for my last note. I was, I was just been going through my notes going, Dad, where we are? And, uh, yeah, my, I've obviously done a lot less notes than you. <laughs> there's a bit of a fight, and the uh, pawn shop owner shoves the gold coin, oh, no, the medallion, into the leprechaun's mouth, and green blood starts oozing out of his mouth. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Now, back to Scott, who's in the, uh, the casino. His eyes have lit up. He's walking around. He's thinking, I am going to gamble in here. This is going to be brilliant. I'm going to... I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't have any money yet. Well, what does he do, Gav? Um, He's got a check, hasn't he, for 23 grand. Oh, he goes and just gets... gets goes and blows it. Like that so woman, it, uh, the, He goes to a table where the, the woman there who's uh, um, the uh, coupier, is she? Yeah. She's she's just go egg, egg, egging him on, really. Actually, egging him on again. You go with yeah, eggs there. She's excellent. egging him on with like, come on, no, you'll be right, honey. Go on, you can do it. That's just you. That's all your money. Don't worry, but you bet. And obviously, that's what her job is, so to speak, really. Um, but but lulling him into a full sense of security of his money and just to spend it all. And he goes and blows it all. He does. He does indeed. Um, now we meet some other characters in here as well. We do meet Fabri- Fazio, uh, F- Fazio the Great, who is the magician that Tammy is the assistant for. He's really bad. He's like Job on Arrested Development, but worse. Um, and yeah, he's, he's Tammy's late um, for the trick, and he's got a new trick. He's trying to show. It. He's trying to set the box on fire. And we meet the casino boss, who's a complete sleaze. Looks a bit like Harvey Weinstein, actually. Um, and he keeps trying to grab Tammy's bottom. Yeah, he does a bit, um, yeah. He gets, and, like, he yeah, gets so a weird death, doesn't he? He does get a weird death but with, with a robot, a sex robot. A sex but robot we'll come to with that. big boobs and just, yeah, weird. Weird. Um, he also, though, the casino boss, also owes money to some really dodgy loan sharks, doesn't he? Yeah. Who they, they, they keep turning up and demanding the money. He's like, look, 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 I'll get you the money, I'll get you the money. And, you know, we're going to make it big. So this all ties in with when Scott decides he's going to cash in his £23,000 tuition fee check from his parents. Just have a little bit of a gamble and pisses the entire lot away in about 45 minutes. The casino boss is obviously really happy. You know, he's made some money. Oh, yeah. He's going to be able to pay off these loan charts. It's going to be brilliant. Um, Scott realises he's almost out of his money. Uh, and he's like, well, hang on, this is not fair. This is, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And he's really depressed, you know. What What, what is he going to do? It's fucked. Yeah. Well, he, he's just a naive kid, really, with a load of money. Imagine if you were 18, 19, and you had £23,000, and I'm you were just, like, into, been, you know. I, I don't gamble, so I, I'd just been like, right, I'll put a five bucks here. No, it didn't win. Cool. I'm out. I'm so boring. Okay, that's, that's I mean, that's, you're a very better person than I am. <laughs> yeah. Leprechaun, what does he? He shoots up the pawn shop. He manages to get the medallion. He says to the um, the guy, "Look, I'll give you um, the medallion for half the gold." And he says, "That's that, no way, absolutely not. That's not what I'm going to do." He attacks him and he kills the pawn shop owner. So Scott thinks, "I'm going to go across the road. I'm going to trade in my watch, that pawn shop over there, so I can continue gambling." Yeah. But when he goes in there, he finds the dead body. 
who's, he's been strangled with a phone cable. He has. Stupid boy takes the phone cable off of the dead body and then rings 911. Now, personally, I wouldn't have done that. I'd have probably got the fuck out of there. Probably rung the police from somewhere else. But I certainly wouldn't have said, oh, yeah, I've touched the phone, I've touched the cord, you know, there's a dead body in here. But, you know, he's, he's, I've never been in that situation where I found a, a dead pawn shop owner after losing 23 grand. So maybe he just wasn't thinking straight, Gav. I guess not, but he, he, he's like, obviously they could be like, well, you, you like, it's this is Las Vegas. Like, shit goes on all the time. And you were actually here, so... Uh, so, he's being naive, but at least he's trying to be a good person. Well, while he's waiting for the cops, he finds a gold coin on the floor, and he thinks, what the fuck? Maybe I can use this to gamble. Yeah, so, so fuck, fuck the dev. You know? So he, pick, he picks up the coin, and as he's picking up the coin, here comes old Leper himself with a big old axe. Leper. Give, give him the chop, and he, with the axe. A little ah, leper. Give me back my gold, boy. Uh, he says, in fact, he does a little rhyme, which is, um, for pulling this trick, I'll chop off your dick. Yeah. Right? Like that? Yeah. Yeah. So, Scott says, he grabs a coin, and he doesn't didn't know it's going to work he just sort of says oh god i wish i was back in the casino ding he just says that in general just like, oh god i wish i was and uh yeah because he's wearing the when the old uh got the coin in his hand yep he's and in he the is. casino and let call his old uh pissed off that he's got away oh he is indeed but he's so, into a winning streak though he is he goes in there and because of this coin the going the, the he put the going coin kind of helps him guide where which chips to bet on and he ends up starts winning loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of money. He's probably got about a hundred grand or something at one point. And obviously, this attracts the the boss of the casino, who says to the woman, the croupier, like, you know, what the fuck's going on? These tables are rigged because the tables are rigged. There's magnets under them. Hmm. But Scott's is still winning. Yeah, yeah. So they close his table, and they say, look, just going to take a break, guys. You know, which. And Scott's like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm going to cash in and go. No, 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 don't go. Well, the boss gives him a suite, doesn't he? He says, have a suite upstairs, you know, order anything you want off the menu. Um, and then in about an hour or so, come back down and, you know. And he thinks, I'm going to get all that money back off this kid, you know. That, that's the idea, yeah. But Tammy says to him, what the fuck are you doing? You don't bet any more. Please cash the chips in, go to the room and, and wait for me. Yeah, I'll come and meet you in about an hour. Now, we get a montage... A Vegas montage, Gav. Yeah. Of the le- the leprechaun just walking along, waving at people, doing little dances. Um, all of this was guerrilla filmed. They didn't get permission to film any of this. Brilliant. So they went around. <laughs> so a lot of these people have just probably turned up in the leprechaun three, thinking that's me. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder what because a lot of them are pointing at him, going, "Oh, brilliant! Look, someone's dressed up over there." Yeah. Uh, and there's a weird moment where he meets Elvis. Yeah. I don't I don't understand why. In my it's, head... It's so bizarre, isn't it? What happened here is... They both go, hey, hey. hey they doing? take a break from filming. I oh, can't, brilliant, right? We'll get ready for the next scene. Give it about 10 minutes, all right? And he's chatting to Warwick, and Warwick says, you know, I do a, not a bad Elvis Presley impression. And the director says, oh, really? Let's hear it. It's an awful Elvis Presley impression. And the director says, I'll tell you what we'll do. Uh, runner... Go and find an Elvis impersonator. Why? Oh, we're going to put a quick scene in in the montage where he does an Elvis impression with an Elvis impersonator. Brilliant. You're a genius director. Go on, off we get. Kind of looks like this... John Belushi. It's Elvis. just a fat, fat old Elvis gets out. Thank you very much. Oh, no, thank you very much. It's like, what the I, fuck is I this? think because they're doing a movie in Vegas, they're like, we've got to have an Elvis bit in it somehow. And they just shoehorned this in. Yep. Leprechaun meets Fazio brilliant and he says to him he's, he says something to him which pisses him off enough that the leprechaun makes some leprechaun shit appear in Fazio's hand yeah and it's green it's so weird movie this is a, <laughs> I don't know why we're doing this <laughs> he, sa- he says he says to him I hope you like that because I squeezed it out for you fresh this morning oh uh... And it's a hot green leprechaun Where's it shit. been then since this morning? Does he have a know. little fridge floating around? <laughs> don't, please don't. You'll set my cough off. 
Good lord. A fridge full of leprechaun shit floating around. Invisible one. Oh god. Loretta, who is the croupier, tells Fazio to follow Scott. She says, I think there's something dodgy going on. Because he was talking to Tammy, who works here, and she's your assistant. And I think there's something dodgy going on. Go follow him. So he does. And uh, the gangsters, meanwhile, confront the leprechaun. And they say, you know, who are you? What's going on? Where, where's this Scott guy? And he turns one of them into a human slot machine. Yeah. With gold coins coming out of his mouth. Weird. Yep. It's literally like someone did a brainstorm of ideas, filmed it all, and then loosely edited all the scenes together into a film, isn't it? Yeah. Because it, it and it's when dear listeners, we're not even getting halfway through the weirdness yet. Not even halfway. Fazio breaks into Scott's room while Scott's having a shower, but Scott catches him and he runs away. Uh, so Leprechaun enters the room. Room service. He walks in, and he bites Scott on the arm. So Scott sort of kicks him in the head, punches him, and throws him out the window like you do. Leprechaun's absolutely fine. Wakes up. He's got a knife in his head, but he's still alive because he's the Leprechaun. Now this is where things get weird, and I've never heard this in Leprechaun tradition before. Werewolf tradition, zombie, vampires. If you're bitten by them, you become them. But if you're bitten by a Leprechaun. I didn't know you became a leprechaun, Gav. No. It's kind of a werewolf thing going on here. It's a bit weird. He looks in the mirror and he's a bit looking a bit leppy, isn't he? Yeah. Kinda. He starts sort of having a sort of crappy Irish accent occasionally. Yeah, it kind of looks like a, a really bad werewolf movie. And I was, it's like the first stage. Of transformation, he, like bigger eyebrows and that, it's just a bit weird. Loretta tries to convince Fazio about the magic coin because she's figured out that it's the magic coin mm. that is to blame for all the money, you know, and all these weird things happening. The casino boss steals the coin from her and says, "Give that to me. You'll have it. You can have it back when you've done what I've said, which is, you know, got that money back off that kid." But he's a bit of a bastard, to say the least. Mm. So. um he wishes that Tammy, he, when he's got the coin, he says, oh, I wish Tammy would, would you know, wanna, want me. And of course, Tammy does. That's so funny, isn't it? So him and Tammy go up to the room together. Now, this is, now we talked about Weinstein. Oh, yeah, it is a bit, isn't it? This scene is very ahead of its time, and they wouldn't have known any of this at that time. Well, they, they would have, actually. But this whole scene, because obviously she's under the influence of the coin and she starts stripping and they start making out and they're about to have sex. And then all of a sudden the spell is broken um, and she realizes, oh, my God, I, I don't know how I got in this room. I don't know what's happened. I don't know if he's had his way with me yet or what. And she's really upset. You know, and Scott sort of says, oh, Tammy, there you are. She's like, don't touch me. Don't touch me. This suddenly becomes very serious and quite a strange commentary on like on rape within Hollywood and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? It's mm. It's a weird, serious vibe that comes into it, but they do it all through silly wishing on a coin, it, which is a shame, really, But because they could have really made it a bit more serious. But, hey, it's the Leprechaun 3 from 1995. We're not walking away from this with loads of uh, morals, are we? Let's be honest. No. So, what happens next? Oh, yeah, so oh, there's a weird moment where Tammy starts slapping him in the lift before they have, well, they almost have sex as well. I don't know why she does that. It's not explained why she does that. There's a, there's a weird bit where we've got we've been introduced, been introduced in the casino bodies, two sort of heavies who work yeah. for the boss, and they're, they're having a discussion about their underwear. It's quite weird. Yeah, they are. They're talking about boxer shorts it's versus... A, it's, it's such a weird movie. One of them looks like Hans Gruber, but like it, a, a do, it, dodgy it, Hans Gruber. Z Z. Grans who Grans Huber? <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, it's Grans Huber. Let's call him Grans Huber. Hans is a f funny cousin. I've written here. It'd be like if you saw Hans Gruber on Amazon, but you ordered it from Wish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is the, this is what you'd get. I thought he looked like a uh, dodgy Hans Gruber. Yeah, that's what I've got here. Yeah, bad Hans Gruber. Yeah. Anyway, um, Loretta figures out the coin the whole thing she breaks that spell like we mentioned 
Uh, she Tammy needs the boss in the balls and runs away. She's very upset. Um, the leprechaun, meanwhile, puts tits on the boss's TV. That's what I, my comment. This is this is my notes. Leprechaun puts tits on the boss's TV. So yeah, and and so he's watching a, a, a movie, and there's a woman at the top, and then she starts saying his name, and he's like, "What? What?" Is that when she comes out the TV? Yeah, and then she comes out the TV. It's all like it's all gone a bit ring here, isn't it? It is like it's like a sexy ring, isn't it? Se- oh, a sexy ring. Se- oh, look at my <laughs> sexy ring, guys. <laughs> and yeah, so this chick comes out the TV, and you know what it's like. You're watching a film, and you're on your own, and then all of a sudden, your wife walk, decides to walk in the room. She could have walked in the room at any time. She walked in the room while this woman's got her giant boobs out writhing around on top of this big fat man yeah. she's like is this the film you're reviewing I said yes it's Leprechaun 3 <laughs> she's like oh it's like a weird porno <laughs> I thought she could have walked in here any time and seen Warwick Davis biting people it's always the way like that moment you pick up your phone to look at it and your boss comes around the corner yep you know so thanks for that Warwick Davis yeah um so yeah, uh, weird she, robot sex. Well, he starts making out with this girl, but then we, as an audience, see that it's actually not a girl. It's a weird robot, an elaborate robot that the leprechaun has magicked together. I don't know why it has to be a robot. I feel like they just saw they knew somebody who could do a robotic effect, and he was like, "Oh, I can put that robot in this film somewhere. Don't worry, I'll I'll find a place to put it." Yeah, and they did. Yeah, and she electrocutes him to death. Yeah, it's very weird. So he's he's killed by the boss a of the sex casino. Robot killed by an electrified sex robot. I mean, it's kind of like RoboCop's hotter <laughs> girlfriend. I mean, I don't know if she's hot. For RoboCop, it's <laughs> RoboCop's hotter girlfriend. Or Terminator without his skin. Well, that's going to be RoboCop's unhotter girlfriend. It it is just. It's really weird, isn't it? Yeah. But Tammy and Scott walk in and find him dead with smoke coming out of him. Uh, they run away just as the gangsters come in, who then confront the leprechaun, who plucks out one of their eyes. Yep. An eye for an eye, my laddie. Um, they run off, um, and uh, but he, well, he actually no, he beats one of them to an actual pulp using his little shillelagh. He's actually quite a strong little bastard, isn't he? This leprechaun. Of course, yeah, yeah. magic. And you got this the other woman who's worked in the casino. She wishes to be sexy and beautiful again, and it's quite sad, really. He's like, oh, okay, I see where that's coming from, but yeah, be it graceful. Is sad. She says, be graceful. You know, she says, and be happy with oh, who you are. Well, she he makes her boobs, but she's dissed earlier though by the, uh, quite a lot by like the magician and stuff. Like, oh, you've got no chance, and the boss disses her lots as well. So yeah, they, they, they all say up. you're really un, unattractive. Yeah, you're really, you're, they yeah, keep calling you, her fat. She's she far wants to be the magician's fat. assistant. Oh no, I know it's fucking Hollywood. Magicians but, like no, you can't be my assistant. You're not attractive enough. But there's um, an interesting moment, an interesting like comment here on looks, isn't there? Because yeah, when she wishes and the wish goes wrong, her lips become ridiculously big. Her boobs are so big, then her butt, and to the point that. She can't, she can't even fit through the the door. Do you remember how she dies, Gav? Um, she blows up. She blows up. She, like she gets stuck in the big doorway. Big Trouble in Little China. Exactly like Big Trouble in Little China. Think so of Big Trouble in Little China, but a sexy big bum exploding they must have in the doorway. Like, they must have had like a field day, right? Let's just throw these ideas at the wall of all death scenes. Because it's a leprechaun, we can do anything we want. Yeah, she pops. My notes say she pops. She does. Bizarre. Weird. <laughs> back, back in the pawn shop. Yeah. Uh, Tammy finds the medallion, and Scott is being because he's been drawn to something, and he smells the gold in the safe. But Leprechaun's back with an axe. Yeah. And they uh, they try to fight him, but he seems to be immune. They shoot him. They chop him. They do it all. Um, and they escape hmm. and they go to the hospital and the doctors uh, wheel off Scott you know oh well, this is odd you know he's got green blood yeah. uh, you know what's happening to his skin and they, they, it's just absolutely ridiculous one of the doctors looks around and says his body is transforming 
that doctor has the nice calmest calming voice I, I, I love that and he acted his chops off he is good in this I really liked it I was like oh be my doctor I, I want to hear your voice well the leprechaun comes in disguised as a doctor doesn't he yeah and the little music's playing diddly, 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 as he walks in as well yeah. um, and you hear ta Tammy Tammy over the tannoy yeah. Um, and they they forget Scott's got green blood, uh, and oh, that's right. They do a, uh, an EKG, and instead of like just your normal EKG report, it's got little pictures of leprechauns all over it. <laughs> yeah. And then the the little beep 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 machine says like "fuck you" on it or something like that, and they're like, "Is this a joke? How is this happening?" And then they find his money. Now, they become the most corrupt doctors and nurses of all time because they find he's got loads of money on him, don't they? Yeah. Meanwhile, Tammy finds the man in the morgue dead, having been killed by the leprechaun. And the leprechaun then traps her on a slab and he's going to kill her. But Scott becomes full leprechaun at this point, but big. He's going to go full leprechaun on his ass. He is, but you never go full leprechaun. Damn. But my ne my notes now say lep versus lep. Oh, okay. I've got Scott and lep battle, but yeah, lep, lep versus lep makes sense. Yeah, so they have a bit of a battle. Um, there's a fire here, and Tammy, Tammy manages to step in with the medallion and save the day. Yeah. They all head over to Fazio, the magician. Um, He's and got a bigger audience now because he wished to be a better magician. He did. He wished to be an amazing so he's magician. He's now got like a big audience and he's like filling out places and stuff like that. This is where he does one of his amazing little dances across the stage. Like his dance. I'd, I'd probably worth watch this movie. If it's just that dance over and over, I'd be happy with that. Yeah, he's he's really good. Really cheesy, really, really good at doing what he does. He does, he does yeah, it's played really well. Yeah, like This film, is funny enough, it's directed competently, do you know what I mean? Well, that director actually has a ton of credits. So the director knew what he's doing. It's just a day job for him, but he at least knew how to get the job done. Join Fazio's appear, uh, stage or show, the Leprechaun appears on stage, and he does the chainsaw trick. Um blood sprays everywhere so imagine being in the audience yeah and fazio is cut in half by a leprechaun in front of you imagine them they'll never they'll never be able to go on holiday again no when was your last holiday i don't want to talk about it did you go to vegas i don't want to talk about it oh did you ever see any of the shows while you were there i don't want to talk about it <laughs> what happened i, don't want I to saw talk about it. a little leprechaun cut a man in half that would be chainsaw. really weird yeah Especially if you like, yep. drop some mushrooms or something. And you've got blood in your eye because you're in the front row. Yeah. He put this really good effect, actually, because when he opens the box up, all the guts just fall out, don't they? Yeah. It's really good. But Scott and Tammy arrive, and they manage to get everybody to leave. There's like a bit of a riot now. And everyone evacuates the casino. And Scott, um, he burns the gold. And... They they obviously couldn't come up with a way to end this because well, they're the, like the, the, he does say come to the green side then the music goes a bit Star Wars I said I, I noticed from Star Wars I was about oh no do you know yeah that because bit? because yeah because he's obviously trying to say you know now you're infected you're a leprechaun we could be leprechauns together we could rule this world yeah, together yeah um but they obviously then said well how are we going to end this film not really sure uh. <laughs> Scott burns the gold, all right? What will happen, though? A leprechaun just sets on fire and flies up in the air? All right, let's film that. Let's do that. Because he just flies up in the air on fire and then falls to bits. And That's that. Scott becomes normal again. They have a kiss, and she throws the coin away, and then that's the end. <laughs> there we go, leprechaun free. <laughs> I can't believe we've got to carry on doing <laughs> these movies. No. But this wasn't even that bad, the next one. Oh, my God. Now, you talked about this was a day job for the director. This, How how long do you think it took to film this? Oh, um, I've, um... 15 days. 14 days. Oh, there you go. Um, Warwick Davis said that this is his favourite film out of the franchise. 
because he liked the humour of it. He said, I think I tapped into the potential of bringing a comedic element to it all. And Brian, the director, uh, is an incredible director. He managed to get so much out of so little money. And that's what's great about working with him. He really gets the humour. Yeah. It was the highest selling direct video film of 1995. Oh my God. <laughs> Warwick Davis is in it as Warwick Davis when Scott first walks into the casino. If you just watch out, you'll see Warwick Davis without any makeup on on one of the slot machines. The slats. I'm going for the slats. Uh, as I've said, Lee Armstrong quit acting after this film. That was the, the lady that played Tammy. Yeah. Um, this was the first film to be released direct to video in the series. Oh, really? Yeah, they all they were considered releasing it in 3D, oh, but they scrapped that by the time it because it took them so long to get anyone to bother putting any money for it that oh. they scrapped scrapped that. Uh, the production could only afford to shoot for one night on location in Vegas, so none of the film was filmed in Vegas apart from one night. Wow. So the scenes of him walking around the strip were all shot without permits, as I mentioned. Okay. Um, pretty much all your trivia for it, really, Gav. <laughs> it's. <laughs> look, uh, look, I think we sent the audience to sleep. Look, I love the first Leprechaun movie. I've got a lot, a lot of time for it. Second one is fun. I still, I like this one as well. You know, it's fun, but don't expect great things for it. However, guys. We're going to have to talk about Leprechaun 4 in space later. Yeah, well, because this one, I watched it and I took notes down. It's just like watching a movie for this show. Not a brilliant one, but it's okay. It, got, it passed the time. Okay, cool. I'll take some notes. But, but, but yeah, the next film. Oh, my God. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I, well, I, I don't know how we can even make that pleasing to the audience. I'm sure they could be like, well, that's it. I'm done with that podcast. I'm not doing it anymore. Well, just when you think things can get any worse, yeah, uh, we're going to go back to 2020 now. <laughs> oh, God, this, this, ep- this episode is just <laughs> full of shit and de- like, oh, despair. Now, now, before we step into my time machine this time, Gav, I need you. Have you had all three vaccinations? Uh, y- yes. Okay, have you had your fourth special one that I've got here? Uh, no, why is it all white and creamy? Right, let me just put this over you. There um, we go. Why are you rubbing it in? Because it's, it's, there's a lot of corona in 2020, okay? Okay, great. And I need you to wear this mask. It doesn't as well, need to be rubbed in there, surely. Yeah, it does. And mm. there's a lot of masks in 2020, so I need you to wear this mask. It's a Bart Simpson mask. It is, yeah. <laughs> Completely ridiculous. It's actually a Bart Man mask. So I've got a Bart Simpson away. mask on and you've, you've rubbed cream lotion all over us, my body. Correct. Right. Are you ready to go back to the year 2020 and so see some, what happens? Some weird nightmare fantasy of yours, isn't it? <laughs> eat, eat my shorts. I'm not eating anything of yours. Right. I'm pressing the button for 2020. All right. And we're off. <laughs> Whoa! What's this machine? This is my time machine. Your yeah. time machine? Yeah. For the next five minutes, we are going to be the time team. The time team. Whoa! What's this? Look at that! Look at that! Oh, he's been dead a hundred years. Look at that! Look at that! That's the Statue of Liberty coming out of the sand. Whoa, there's a dinosaur! <laughs> oh my God! Look at that! It's something else. <laughs> Wow. Wow. So, when D20, here we are. Yeah. I think the best thing to do, Gav, is just work our way through the year and I'll talk you through what happened. How about that? <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's in everyone's minds, but it's, it's, it's in a weird, distant memory, even though it isn't really distant, but it just feels a million miles away. But yeah, go for it. It's, okay. like, it's, like, it's like Leprechaun 4. But yeah, it's gone in. So we start off with some terrible bushfires in Australia at the beginning of uh, 2020. Uh, yeah. They actually started in December 2019 and were still burning a month or so later. Uh, 47 million acres were um, destroyed. That's uh, crazy. Thousands of people lost their homes. 34 people died. And 
hundreds of thousands of animals and species were wiped out. Um, really terrifying and, and sad times in Australia. Mm. Um, forgot, that was all... forgot about that, you know? Overshadowed. Yeah. Overshadowed. I mean, what a way to start the year. What a way to start the year. We then, um, the following month, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex shocked the world when they announced early January they were stepping down as royals they were dropping their title yeah. and they were they were moving to america people couldn't believe what they were hearing could this year get any worse people were saying could it get any worse i didn't care <laughs> about about them uh, the fire obviously that's devastating well that was on january the 8th on january the 9th the world health organization who announced who exactly announced Hey guys, just a little thing uh, to mention. Um, there's a deadly coronavirus um, emerged in Wuhan, China. Might be something that we might need to think about. And obviously, within about six months, around 20 million people would. And uh, sorry, 751,000 people had died, and 20 million people were infected. Mm. It spread across the globe. We all know about that. We had lockdown. We had. We're still feeling the aftershocks now, whether it's people who've got long COVID or it's affected people's mental health. We were locked up for almost two years. Masks mm. became a thing that we very common. You know, they've stopped now in a lot of places, but some people still want to wear them. Everybody went to Netflix. Tiger King became a ma massive thing because nobody Tiger else had King, anything yeah. else to do, so they all watched the same thing. The, the film industry growing to a halt. It did. Uh, the music industry really picked up. Funny enough, um, funny enough, the new Jackass movie that came out, um, that was one of the movies they used as a tester to uh, uh, see, <laughs> use those guys as guinea pigs of Jesus making Christ. a movie to see how they could get back into making movies. And went, oh, those guys did it. Yeah. People were streaming, like celebrities were streaming and musicians oh, were doing gigs from the oh living room. Oh, God, those celebrities all sang a song. Imagine all oh, the people. Oh, my God, just sitting there going... Fuck off, you cunts. Like you're, you're cringing at work. Just go back to your little bloody... Some of it was good. Um, one of the bands oh. I really like, Biffy Clyro, every Friday he did, the lead singer Simon did, a an hour's gig from his house. Yeah, because this is the thing. Everybody started doing... I, I, like, for example, myself. I DJed yeah, you did a couple stuff, of times yeah. live on, <laughs> on Facebook because I had nothing else to do. And loads of people really enjoyed it. And it's like, oh, that was, it was actually real, quite fun. And I wouldn't have done that like many other uh, uh, um, uh, musicians or artists or entertainers were going to the internet and just doing live gigs and things it's crazy podcasting went through the roof did it we we were probably the most productive we've been for six six months or more because we had, no one had anything to do other than sit around recording or I doing guess. yeah yeah uh, you know so a lot of the podcasts a lot of the shows i follow they suddenly their their output was incredible we were trying to I, I well, I, I actually wrote a script while I was just sitting around doing nothing, which we're still trying to get made into a movie. But again, because of COVID, it became really hard to end up having meetings to to discuss the film. Obviously, you could do online meetings, but we wanted to like meet up and stuff, you know. But you couldn't do that shit. I made some babies. Yep, because you uh, expect as many other people sitting around having sex. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't which just we do, sitting around sex. Yeah. Um. And yeah, it was a really weird time. But I feel like there was, there was some. Again, I would no offence to anybody who you know who suffered, but I feel like there were some silver linings. I feel like it was almost a bit of a reset. It made us realise what is important. Yeah, for a lot of other people, I um, I kind of was aware of of. For a long time, I've sort of looked, being self-employed. I look at the nine to five people, the sort of all the people in the office, and I do think that sometimes oh, I'm sure there must be people that don't really want to do that, and obviously they're not that happy doing it. And this actually um, sort of pushed some people to decide, like you know, I'm not that happy with it. And obviously the commuting thing, um, you know, we can actually work from here and do meetings here. So actually, I've got a shirt and tie on, but actually I'm in my pants. Hmm. You know, I mean, I've I've worked from home. For over two years now, since since the pandemic, you know, yeah, um, I've only been in the office once in two years, which is crazy. Um, All right, it's changed the world, obviously, because it's a pandemic. It's going to, 
and I know lots of people that are still struggling but with their mental health because of it, but also some people have been affected physically by it. And my children are still ill. They it, got they got COVID uh, about two months ago, and they're still struggling with yeah. coughs and stuff like that. It's you know, rubbish. It, yeah. it's just it divided also though. It really because everybody has a voice nowadays um, on social media. It divided the world. Between the people who are like, it's fake, it's a, it's a made-up thing, and other people, oh, wow. you know, oh, it, it wow. just really started dividing, like, really, and it's quite interesting. People were losing their minds. People yeah, were losing all, their all minds. The place. It's, like, it's like if the day we actually go, yeah, this is aliens, this is, or, or an alien actually appears, do you know what I mean, or something from another planet appears on Earth, that would just freak everybody out. It would just, what the fuck? It's the same or, well not as same as this but it's but, such a grand scale which mixed everybody apart and put them into the camps where people almost attacking other people for beliefs of whatever they believe and everybody can believe whatever they want you know but, but i felt i felt that though because i felt the mania of it because yeah, it's negative we yeah. were locked up man we had nothing yeah, else yeah, to yeah. do but read the news it, we were, the uh, news was forced down was our up. throats domestic daily. abuse was really high it was there was murders you know um and Every day, I felt like we all had to watch that Prime Minister at 6 p.m. every day. The Prime Minister gave another speech and another speech. And, well, in you know, England, obviously, yeah. Yeah, and it was it was just rammed down our throats. It was just to the point that that was all there was to talk about. And, and that was that, it. The news was that. Nothing else. And it was nothing a bit else like, mattered. There was... And I hate the way it just scared people. And some people just like absolutely terrified because all they do is just sit and look at the news and believe what they're told. The BBC say this. Oh, okay, it must be true. Or whatever. No. So... <laughs> absolutely crazy well it's very recent you know our listeners all know and i've all been Everybody through that knows it. yeah, yeah. So this was fucking... but yeah 2020 continues so really, anyway what happened in the movies well hang on we're still going through 2020 oh, i'm afraid God. because uh kobe bryant and his daughter gianna were killed in a terrible helicopter crash along with seven other people i didn't know who the fella was um I didn't know he was a basketball player. I didn't know until yeah. said. I, don't, I still don't know if you're more about him. I suppose one of the most quite successful good, basketball players uh, in, in the world. Right. Um, you know, he's up there with like Michael Jordan and people like that. Um, so that was that was sad. This, that was still January. All of this is still January, by the way, Kev. Yeah. Oh. We're not we're not out of January it's like yet. Leprechaun four. Yep. It's not out of January yet. Moving into February. This is kind of good news, but nothing came of it. They tried to impeach. Uh, Donald Trump, oh, but yeah. uh, he yeah. was acquitted. He was acquitted at the beginning of February. Um, so, you know, there we go. That's that. There was some more good news. Harvey Weinstein had a verdict, uh, although he turned up to court using a Zimmer frame, looking really ill and Who apparently little tennis balls. I don't know what he was doing, um, but he was convicted of raping an, an aspiring actress. And sexually abusing a TV and film production assistant. And he got uh, COVID and he stood inside. Yeah. So although there's probably hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that he's abused who he'll get away with, at least he's there's some t- small amount of justice. Do you reckon, do you reckon he's, because he's got money inside, do you reckon he's probably all right? Yeah, I reckon he's living like a king in there. Probably unfortunately. Is, isn't he? Yeah. <clears throat> um, the stock market crashed. Funny enough, in 2020 as well, uh, because of the pandemic, it triggered a global recession. Numerous countries went into lockdown. No one was spending any money. The economies of different countries were just stopping. And the Dow Jones Industrial Average stuff, it's worst single day point drop ever in March. So we're in March now, so it's not getting any better. <laughs> no. Well, let's move along then, uh, because uh, I think this is still March. Might be April. The sad story of George Floyd then happened. Yeah, this was... It, what a year. Now, this came along... This was this, supposed to be a fun segment. This, George Floyd, obviously, yeah, yeah, black, yeah. black guy killed by white cop, mainly white cops. Just... You know, choked just, him in front of... They murdered him in front of... Let's be honest, they murdered him in front of everybody. ridiculous. Like, like, just... <laughs> just putting his knee down yep. on the guy's throat. I can't breathe. It's like, I can't breathe. It's I can't like, breathe. It's like, yeah, you, you, you've probably had people say stuff to you before, and they're lying. They want you to, but like, you got your knee on his throat to the point where he dies 
underneath you. Imagine that if you're there and you can't actually breathe and you're going, I can't, I can't, you know, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. And then at that point, you, you can't actually breathe and you die, but the, you can't do anything about it. It's just insane by, by the police who are here to no, protect and serve. Because people have been locked up for months and months and months at this point, in like as in the lockdown yeah, worldwide. Yeah, they, they needed to they needed to vent. And boy, did they vent, especially over in America. There were yeah, but, there but, were lots, but rightly so, rightly so. There were there were some peaceful, but a lot of violent protests. Unfortunately, and, yes. You know, it, it it was crazy, absolutely crazy. There was more shootings. There was another girl that um uh there was a girl that was shot, another guy, the kid that was shot, and unfortunately, we hear as oft as common as we hear about school shootings in America. And I'm not dissing any of our American friends, listeners, you know, but as, as common as we hear about school shootings, we also hear about people of color being shot by police um, in yeah. America, and it's just. Yeah. Guns are the problem. We, we've said it a million times. Everybody knows this, you know. Um, but yeah, so that that's something else that happened in 2020. And there was a funny little bit where everybody thought that King Jong Un was dead, and he actually had to appear on TV and say, "No, no, no, I'm still alive. I'm still here, <laughs> South Korea, just doing my thing." Um, people then said that was a fake Kim Jong Un because everybody thinks everything's a fucking fake. Weird. Very weird. Uh, what else happened this year? Oh, Ghislaine Maxwell was arrested. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein, Epstein's madam, who was arrested in July on sex trafficking charges. Um, she was in a 158-acre estate in New Hampshire. Loads of money she had, didn't she? So things weren't going well this year. Well, let's take some. let's take a breath because, thankfully... Oh, no, it's all gone wrong again. Murder Hornets. Do you remember the Murder Hornets that arrived in the US? Uh, yeah, but I, I, yeah, I've totally forgotten. Really. Two, to, two to three inches long Asian giant hornets that hit America. Did it do much? Did they do much? They wiped out a few bee colonies, but luckily not, not a lot came of it. Luckily. Okay. okay. So that's okay. Not too bad. In Beirut... In August, there was uh, 270, sorry, 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate on a boat. It exploded. Okay. It killed almost 200 people. Was there anything good that happened in 2020? Kamala Harris was chosen as the Democratic VP candidate. Oh, yes. Yes. So that was good. Yeah. That was good, wasn't it? Yeah. If you're a fan of Marvel movies... Unfortunately, Chadwick Boseman died this year at 43 of colon cancer. Played Bat Panther. Really talented young man. Not, not yeah. like what my mum thought it was. Not the Pink Panther. The Black Panther. I was like, mum, no, Peter said has died years ago. <laughs> California were hit with wildfires later in the year. Millions upon millions of acres were burnt to the ground, which displaced hundreds of thousands of people who some of which still don't have homes. Trump tested positive for COVID-19. Yeah. That was quite good. And then Eddie Van Halen died at the end of the year. Yeah, that was a fun year. What, what was going on in the cinema then? We, we rolled out the vaccine right at the end of the year, so that was all right. So, as you can probably imagine, the cinema wasn't really doing an awful lot this year. Um, there was a film that you didn't like and I did called Ten A, which came out this year. Called what? Ten A. Oh yeah. Which you didn't <laughs> I like. What, what, what was that? Uh, no, I I enjoyed bits of it. I just didn't. I just I'm too I'm too stupid. The problem with this year is no one was going to the cinema because we weren't allowed. So any film that was already in the cinema when the pandemic hit was pulled really quickly. Some films were released straight to streaming, um, and other films were just delayed until, oh, this will only last six months. Oh, this will only last a year. James and then almost, Bond, yeah, uh, Ghostbusters. Yeah. All of these movies. So not an awful lot came out. But if we jump over to horror, because obviously I built this time machine to go back in time and see what was going well, on. This horror. is what this podcast is. Everybody here is listening to because they like the horror films. And they're <laughs> just thinking, this show is just you guys rambling about the world. The, 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 um, the movie, the number one movie of 
2020 was the last film I saw at the cinema before the pandemic, which was Bad Boys 3 or Bad Boys for Life. Mm. I, I did see, I feel like I saw it, saw it I, and I don't really remember it, except uh, Martin Lawrence was looking a little bit out of shape. <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> you look like the Nutty Professor. You look like he was borrowed, borrowed the, the fat suit from the Nutty Professor. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, also 1917 came out this year. I think you saw that in the cinema. Uh, yeah, really good. Yeah, really good movie. And um, Son of the Hedgehog came out this year, which I thought was a great movie. Um, so those are your top three. But horror. Horror. There was some good, good horror came out this What's year. What's horrific, Dan? Come on. The Invisible Man dropped this year. I watched it in the cinema. Did you? So, yeah, Sarah and I, I remember watching that. I think that was the last film we watched for a little while in the cinema. Ah, no. I like it. Do you but- like it? I know what, very quickly, I know what they did start doing, we'll get back to it, with, uh, what they started doing in the cinemas, when they started dropping, like, older movies. So Sarah and I managed to watch, like, original Halloween and watch some other movies, original ones. It's like, oh, That's this right. is pretty cool. It's like, uh, Enter the Dragon. It's like, this is really cool. And uh, with, like, no one in the cinema, because nobody wanted to go back to it, quite scared. Well, that was it, because there was no new films. They were putting classics. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know. So we watched quite a few things. Terminator, just us. Labyrinth, all these sort of movies were being yeah. re-shown in cinema. Uh, Invisible Man. Uh, yeah, I did enjoy it. I need to watch it again, actually. And I think it's on Netflix, if I'm not mistaken. It is indeed on Netflix. I did enjoy it. Sarah, I know she really liked it. I think liked it more than I did. But I did enjoy it. I don't... The, the lead... I wasn't really into the lead that much, the lady. Um... But uh, yeah, it's, it was a fine film. It's, it was. I find it incredibly tense because, of course, he's invisible, and you you're watching a scene, and you think you start becoming paranoid. Like, is he in this scene? Is he in this, in the room with her? That's it, the best thing about the Invisible Man. Do you like the original Universal? Oh, I'm a big fan of the Invisible Man. It's good, um, isn't it? And in fact, we, we've got an Invisible Man episode penciled in where we'll be covering the Hollow Man. Um, and either the original Invisible Man or John Carpenter's Memoirs of an Invisible Man with Chevy Chase. Um, I'm probably going to say the universal one. Yeah, I thought you might say that. Yeah, I thought you were going to say we have an Invisible Man working in our office. I don't know why. There's one in the room with me right now. But you can't see I think. him. I can't see him. He's having a wank, I think. I can hear some noises. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, it's like this jizz just appears in the air. Like, where did that jizz come from? Um, the Hunt came out this year, which uh, I think I you watched, watched recently. Uh, yeah, I watched it recently. I was like, on Netflix going, I want to watch something. I've, uh, I still hate that when you go to watch something. You go, oh, I could watch a movie. Then I've got all these different platforms I can watch them on. But apart from that, I've got a massive movie collection. And go, oh, what should I watch? Anyway, I did it, and it was one of those rare occasions where I went, oh, I want to watch that. Put it on, press play, and within a couple of minutes, I was watching a movie. I enjoyed it. Really good. Really, really good film. Yeah, very I didn't, good. didn't really know very anything violent. about it, but I heard it's kind of all right. And I kind of like the premise. It's, yeah, yeah. Now, because we are in 2020, normally you and I are quite up on, on you know, the films we're discussing. But... A lot of these I won't have seen yet because some of them are only still only just come out to stream and I didn't go to the cinema to watch some of these. So The Night House is another one that came out this year, which I know everybody says is a fantastic film. The Lighthouse? Uh, the Night House. Oh, no, I don't know. Um, the Night House has just hit Disney Plus, actually, in the last couple of months, so that's easy for me to check out on there. Uh, another film called Caveat. I know a lot of people have said that's a really good film as well. Um, Slacks came out this year, which is about a pair of jeans that's infected and they're possessed and they kill people i watched it i loved it i covered it in one of our patron episodes mm. really good mm. the empty man came out this year did you get around to watching that are you talking about the invisible man having a wank in your room no the empty man oh, oh is that is that him when he's done <laughs> the, the invisible man afterwards the invisible is the empty, empty man. man oh god i don't know i've not seen it i don't know what that is Oh, fantastic. Uh, Underwater. No, I've not seen I've heard this is really good, so I need again, I need to watch it. I have not seen it. One that I really want to see is Freaky with Vince Vaughn. Oh, uh, yeah, that came out in a cinema, didn't it? Yes, uh, it's where he body swaps with a, a teenage girl, and he's a serial killer. So Yeah, I might, I might give it a go. I don't mind Vince Vaughn, actually. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan. Give it a go. Okay. I, in real life, he's an absolute asshole, apparently. But, um, uh, oh, I can imagine, yeah. 
yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I like watching him in films. He's, he's good. I imagine somebody, somebody is, you, but you have to be to be an actor and be like someone like Vince Vaughn or someone who's really been quite up there in the limelight for such a long time. You've got to be like really like, quite out there in a certain way. Like your lifestyle, you can only hang out really with actors because they only understand you. Yeah. Because no one else does. Because you live such a bizarre and weird world. You're not really real. You're not, you're just a, a thing which is entertains us in a box. I was thinking it's that about strange. the Will Smith thing. I was thinking that, thinking when I was reading the story, I was like, so Jake Gyllenhaal, Denzel Washington, and Bradley Cooper sort of took you aside. Like, what world do you live in with those? Imagine, three? Me, imagine me and you standing between them, going, oh, giving Will Smith advice. Uh, yeah, but probably not a good idea. Yeah, yeah. But, but I, I can't do this. Denzel Washington is just talking over me. <laughs> I can't speak. Look at him. Oh, there's Dick Gyllenhaal. What hmm. do you want, Donnie Darko? I've just wanted to say, you know, you shouldn't have hit him. Thanks, Donnie. It, it, it's, it's, just, it's a weird world, isn't it? Yeah, it just acts, isn't it? I yeah. was thinking about this. And we're on a bit of a tangent, but I was thinking the other day. So, obviously, some, like I was thinking about rappers, but also this can apply to actors. So they're all in the in that industry. So let's say let's say I'm Ben Stiller, and I'm walking down the road, and I go into a restaurant, and there's I don't know, Jim Carrey or someone in there. Do do I go up and go, hey, Jim Carrey? Yeah. I can. I'm allowed you, to talk you to do, you because, because you're in the same profession. But what if we've never met before? And, and uh, Jim no, Carrey's because you mm, you probably no, worked with, probably work with people who work with each other. You just know of each other, so you're most likely going to talk because it's the same profession. You're in the same weird world it's of weird, entertainers. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's why my buddy, I actually, is quite commendable. He's very pretty much down to earth still. But he hasn't really any done anything. He's not a name like those guys. But he he still is like lead. With... Yeah, but he's been in some really big budget films. Oh yeah, as lead like before Colin Farrell and stuff like that. Like his name yeah. comes first, and Ed Harris now. But um, but yeah. So but he's he's still normal. He still does normal stuff. Um, but yeah, it must be weird when you're like one be. of those like your Denzel Washington or your Vince Vaughn. But so I can imagine that some of them would be complete arseholes going back to where this stemmed from. Well, a Russian movie came out this year called Sputnik, uh, oh, which I, I, think, I think you've seen. I saw it, and I remember it being okay. But I really enjoyed like it. A, I watched it uh, a million years ago. It hit Netflix, and that's right. It was, it was yeah. subtitled in Russian, and yeah. it was about a person who goes to space and comes back. Is it basically like Alien? Pretty much, uh, yeah. Done in a different way, and then done really well. I, I really enjoyed it. Mm, mm. Possessor came out this year. No, I don't know that. Uh, a lot of people will talk about this one. It's got a yellow cover with a strange face on it, mm. and another movie which everyone told me to watch, and I was like, "Is it going to be that funny? Is it going to be that good?" And it was Host. You must have seen Host. It's oh, only, of course, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's only an hour long, and it was made during the pandemic as well. Obviously, it's really well done, and I find it incredibly scary. Uh, it really I, made me jump. I thought it was right. It's definitely a movie of its time because obviously they're talking about right. I'm going to break. I'm going to break uh, lockdown. I'm going. I'm coming to you and stuff. Yeah, that's true. It wasn't too that's... bad, but yeah, so it's, it's unfortunately got a very much a date to it, and that's like that's the only bad side of that movie. It's unfortunately going to age Train to Busan Peninsula I haven't seen it still actually really good film really I just didn't some, I don't know just didn't get around to it really um, I guess yeah, I it's, do. it's um it's probably not as good as the original but no, well, it's bigger it's bigger scope bigger budget it's more of an action film really but I enjoyed it uh, the Grudge remake I, I never saw that <sighs> like, do we need another Grudge film I don't know I'm not sure if I saw it the craft remake. I know that your Sarah has seen that, and oh, I don't, I don't. I, I, I know a lot you. of people said it was absolutely fucking awful. Mm. Sometimes uh-huh. I need to get her on to just give her opinion of things, just to say, yeah, that was shit. Yeah, yeah, just uh, she needs to be listening background. So yeah, shit. Okay, she's cool. probably listening to this now, going. Yeah, she is. Right. She is. Yeah. She's going. Yes, yes, and it's, yeah. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> and pretty much that was all you got for 2020 because it, the Hollywood the industry was panicked no one was going to the cinema hmm. no, one, no one was knowing what to do people were out of the house going for their two allowed walks a day listening to podcasts oh my god you're allowed to leave your it's like you should have a big tunnel in every city and town you can now leave your house bing, well, it got, it got bing. to the point where if I went to the shop 
I'd be, I'd say to Alice, well, I'm a bit worried. What if the police stop me? Because yeah, they were doing, no, they were no, stopping people no, and saying, why are you out? Well, it got to that point when, because I live quite far from Sarah, like, we don't just get to, see, like, right now, I'm in the middle of not seeing her for a, a month gap, and it, it happens quite a lot. But we, it got to the point where we hadn't seen each other for a while, and I was like, right, that's it, I don't care. And I was on the M25 pretty much alone. <laughs> and I was like, oh. <laughs> I must admit, we broke lockdown once. Um, we, before Alice was pregnant or anything, we were having a few drinks just me and Alice and a friend of mine contacted me and I said, look, just fucking come on over, man. And I, I'm sick of this. Mm. Just, we'll, we'll sit, we'll sit, you know, in the garden. Mm. So he came over and then another friend of ours came over and there was four of us all together. We all sat in the garden, but then we ended up just coming inside and sitting around the dining room table. And, you know, we, we really wanted to hug each other, but we kind of, we did after a long time of drinking and, but then it was like, oh. And the next day I felt really bad because I was hung over and I knew I'd broke lockdown and then I was paranoid. Like, what if somebody saw? I don't know, man. I was worried about the neighbours seeing it. I know. It's so it, weird, yeah. isn't it? Well, it's yeah, so the weird. fact that I was, you got to imagine, okay, if you don't know the M25 in England, it circles Greater London. Um, and it's a good way of getting into different parts of Greater London and obviously getting out of the, out of the city. Um, um, to be at times the only car on there. Occasionally, I'd see other cars, but pretty much the only car on there to be do that was the weirdest fucking thing, and that made me go, "Oh my god!" Every camera's clocking me. <laughs> They're going, "Who voice? Where's he going then?" I was, "Oh my god!" I know because people were getting stopped because they know. were saying, "Oh, I'm driving to drop some toilet roll off at my mum's, who I lives know. 300 miles away from me." Well, no, turn around and go back, mate. I know, I know, I got away with it, but um, yeah. I was going to say I was getting medicine for Sarah, and Sarah does actually need heart medicine, so actually it wasn't even that much of a lie. I it's didn't just, get her any medicine, though, but still. Just a crazy, crazy year, really. I know. It was fucking weird. Anyway, guys, ladies and gents, non-genders, <laughs> I hope you haven't fallen asleep listening to this horror podcast. Let's jump back in the time machine. Oh, please do. Let's get we need to here. go back to 2022, and we need to discuss... Oh, God, I don't want to... <laughs> Get in here, put your mask on. I tell you what, you want me to lead this one? <laughs> Fucking hell. All right. All right, I need I need to do a lateral flow test on the way back because I need to make sure you haven't brought anything back with you. Right, yeah, here we go. I didn't know these lateral flow tests actually have to be popped up your bottom. like. Yeah, a, I've got an anal one. That's, that's... <laughs> I, I did, why does it say Dan's special tester? You've written that on with a Sharpie. Yep. Oh. All right, I'm going to press the button now. <laughs> Somewhere in space, he is waiting. Somewhere on this ship, he is watching. He is powerful. What the hell was that? He is evil. He's here. And he's ready. <laughs> to party. Good evening. Hot stuff coming up. <laughs> You have 60 seconds to avoid detonation. That'd be a lesson to you, lad. Always wear a proper laptop. Off with a head. 30 seconds until detonation. Take a bite out of this. Take this, you son of a... What did you shoot him with? Steroids? Leprechaun 4 in space. This barbecue's only just begun. Leprechaun 4 in space with a rating of 3.5 out of 10, ladies and gentlemen. We're coming at you with a comedy fantasy horror. Our deadly leprechaun is in space to woo a beautiful princess who is impressed with his gold and desires to separate him from it. <laughs> yep. Um, directed again by Brian Trenchard-Smith, who directed the last leprechaun movie. And, and BMX, BMX Bandits. Bandits. <laughs> yeah, well, whenever you uh, decide to uh, 
you know, uh, uh, right, we're going to have a movie. What are we going to do with it now? It's a franchise. What should we do? Let's go to space. James Bond did it. Roger Moore did it in space. Ooh, Roger Moore. Um, and then, you know, Jason did it in Friday the 13th. Yep, Jason went to space. Even Amateurville has recently been in space. I know, it happens. Movies like to go into space once in a while. It's always one of those things, though, when you go into space, you have to make sets which look like spaceships or planets. Even but... one of the Hellraiser movies ended in, it was in space, one of the last absolutely. ones. Absolutely. I've not seen it, but absolutely. Um, and, like, the set in this, the planets, wow. That's interesting. It looks like paper. It looks <laughs> no. like coloured paper on the walls. The... Scratched up. One of the producers and the director of this, I believe, said they were really disappointed with the special effects from the spaceship <laughs> because they said they looked worse than PlayStation 1 graphics, which the PlayStation 1 was out at the time. The the, 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 the spaceship... Well, I've got my notes. Says, it goes like, I can see one from here. It says, ship, spaceship, CGI. As we go through it, it just says, ship, spaceship, CGI. Every once yeah. in a while. Funny enough, this is the only movie I dictated the notes to on my phone rather than not writing them out on my iPad. Not because I was glued to the screen. I don't know the reason, but I was just like, oh, I have to read it out. I, like, I couldn't be bothered to write it out. I don't know why. It's like I had foreshadowing that, that I was not going to enjoy this film, and I felt like I lived many, many lives in the hour and 35 minutes it took to of my life to watch this film. Now I'm about to relive it again. Now, my <sighs> opening, funny enough, my opening note says, asteroid flying through space, really shit CGI. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Um, it's so, a very alien setup. Yeah, I would probably say let's. I, I let's, don't want to go, go through every yeah, scene, not, pop, please. We're not going to do that. What I we're going to do is mind. we're going to lose the talk about the plot, which is that there's a, a, an alien princess, um, and the leprechaun is basically wants her to marry him, uh, so that he can become king of her planet, and therefore he's like a really rich leprechaun king of whatever planet it is. Yeah. However, a bunch of space marines who've been hunting the leprechaun, they think he's an alien. They're like a really low-budget version of the marines from Alien. But they haven't, though. They've been doing a job for the past 30 days, and their 30-day contract's up. Just like the guys from the, the Alien, really, aren't they? Sort it's, of like it's, a, it's exactly the same, yeah. And um, <clears throat> they're, they're told that oh, they've got to stay on. But they've done their job, so they were, were they looking for the... I didn't even know what they were doing. Were they looking for Lepcorn, or were they mining something? They're just Marines, were they, looking for Lepcorn? But they couldn't they're, find him. Yeah, they're looking for... Well, they don't know... They don't call him a Lepcorn, they call him a little vicious bastard, is but what they Is it him. because they know he comes with gold? Well, no, it's because they're told by the guy... Powers. Do, Dr. Mittenhand, the German... That weird, weird fucking thing, yep. You know, they're told... You must, you know, get the, this creature because I want to, to experiment on him. It may be, you know, so they're just like, well, we'll just get this creature. He's for like this Robocop's doctor. whack younger brother, isn't he? He's, he's ridiculous. And then you've got the colonel who's got half his head got blown off in a war. Oh, uh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, there's him, yep. Yeah. And also, Gav, we've got... Ooh, baby, ooh, baby, ooh, baby, ooh, baby, ooh, baby, ooh, baby. The damn that's Miguel, what you do when you're having a shit. You have a scene. Miguel, now, I'll... Miguel Nunez Jr. from um, that Jason movie where he eats the enchiladas and does a shit. I thought I mean, I'd see. I thought I was watching this again. I recognise that dude's face. And I had a look good. and I was he's, like, he's the best there thing. There we go. This. He's the best thing in this. Ooh, baby, ooh, baby. Singing while you're shitting with you that, with your love <laughs> with yep. your sweetheart is a, so let, is a romantic let's, thing. Let's, so let's picture this. Let's just talk about that scene instead. I, I'm going to <laughs> instead of, instead of instead of the review of this film. So imagine I'm I'm in the woods with Alice. <laughs> no. I'm, eat, I'm eating an enchilada, and all of a sudden the enchilada. It's not. not right. you, you don't. You shouldn't. You just don't do it. Uh, Even Alice and I have been together for ten years. Would not sing to each other while I'm taking with, a shit with a wooden wall between you partitioning you, you could smell the shitty enchiladas you'd be, coming you'd out you'd be hearing it drop Ooh, baby, hey, baby. <laughs> <laughs> jesus christ um 
yeah, this film. So, uh, I mean, loosely, like the acting in it is okay. It's fine. They're yeah. saying the lines they've got to say. I like in some way. I can't believe I just said the word like. The the the, the weird effects of the metal plated head of the colonel and then like the boss guy with his weird like shoulder one arm and head and the rest of the robot in a wheelchair oh it felt like doctor who that didn't it, it? Was very doctor who but that didn't look you know for a low budget thing it's not too bad Trouble yeah the is, practical though, effects the were all right look shit that's the problem you, the... They, they, you, you could have darkened it down more and put more more mood to it but then again what sort of film were they making they're making Leprechaun 4 they're not making fucking Godfather 3 or or whatever I'd not really you know um, yeah so yeah I think (laughs) I think where the film is let down it's definitely it's CGI of the spaceships and asteroids and planets is absolutely awful yeah Um, the sets are really really just real cheap it just it it just takes it all away like there's a lot of wide sort of sets uh, shots where you see like low wide shots where you see a lot of the people in the shot and obviously you've got to do that at times but you then really get to see the the background set design you can also tell that they they recycled the sets or shot from over different and angles yeah. yeah and painted them different colors yeah. um and they didn't have a decent script or a decent story because this film did not need to be an hour and 35 minutes. You could have cut 20 minutes off this easily. Yeah, but they probably had to have it at this time they were, for a certain, for, for certain um, uh, criteria for when you actually send it into um, these companies. They give you a list of all the, all the things that they need. And uh, you have to have your film exactly to this spec. So, um, yeah. And there's a lot, a lot of cast in this film, you know, as well. And you have the Space Princess... But again, it felt like a school play at times. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, here's the space princess. Look, I don't know. It went on for so long. <laughs> three times, three times. I took, I got to see how long it is. And I was like, forty-five minutes. How is it forty-five minutes? And I, and, I, and our listeners know me, and I. See, you I will do watch, it. I, that, the listeners I know me, and I don't have anything. any yeah, but, but, fucking but, patience. But for some reason, and I, I remember watching this only about five years ago and thinking it was okay. However, this time around, mm. I don't know why, but I just struggled to get through this. I know. Um, there's a lightsaber in it. That's a weird. It's his first kill and he uses a lightsaber. Warwick Davis does. And it's a bit like, okay. I remember thinking, oh, I watched that bit and I thought, oh, great. Okay. So this is where we're going here. Yeah, we do cut, like, the, the, at one point, like, we just cut straight to the introduction of the leprechaun and Warwick, and it's, he's got a tie, a chained up woman, and that's the, is that the woman that he's gonna, that's his queen, isn't it? That's the, the princess, that's the princess. Right, and from there he tries to persuade her, but he kind of comes across all suave in that at times, and so he kind of almost reminds me of Dennis out of Sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah, because he stops doing the <laughs> he does he stops doing the um the rhyming so much in this one. Yeah, and he's more. I don't really know what, what they were doing with it. Really, in fact, his accent almost becomes a bit Scottish in this one. Yeah. I think Somewhere... Warwick Davis got muddled up with his, where the leprechaun was from. I know it's weird, but at least yeah, I suppose you had the, the director and again, so at least they kind of knew what they were doing. I guess the budget's probably less. You know. Um... Uh, some of those gun battles with the lasers. Pew, pew. It... <sighs> <laughs> Is that... And that was Leprechaun 4 in space. It, uh, there was a bit towards the end where the guy <laughs> got his DNA modelled up with a scorpion and a tarantula. Then it goes into some fucking fly territory, budget <laughs> fly territory. It's like, what I, is going on now? Because they spent a lot of money on the practical effects. Like, I've it got was to say, weird. They didn't need to do the that. They could put that money good. somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. The, the, like the squashed head at one point. There's a squashed head against a wall. A lot of the kills looked quite good, didn't they? Yeah, not too bad. Uh, so they've they, got this they, machine, haven't they? They've got this machine that makes gold smaller and bigger. And yeah, I was like, like, I was like, machine. I was like straight away, I was like, we're going to have a big leprechaun, aren't we? It's just easily 
going to be the thing. And yep, lo and behold, they they reverse the machine and they make the leprechaun about twenty foot tall. Later on, they do, don't they? There's a there's a spaceship disco in this. The sex. Yeah, there it. Oh God, there's the disc. I forgot about the disco. Yeah. What? So on this spaceship to relax, the Marines have got a disco room. They have. Well, you've got, is... have, you've got to have a disco room when you want to relax. <laughs> Don't tell me about the disco. I've got a disco room. <laughs> I've got my own type of disco room, but I'm not going to tell the audience about it. Oh, Jesus Christ. Have I been in there? Is that where I woke up that time? <laughs> yep. This, so, yeah, we're not breaking down the plot of this film. We're just going to talk about it briefly. There's not really There's free a lot to say, it. really. It's, uh... It's... It's... It's unfo- It needs to be re-edited. I'm not going to do it. That's for fucking sure. I couldn't fucking sit for hours with this movie. It, if it was cut down properly, it could. You could probably do something and take out. I don't know why. You see, because you've only got so much of a budget, but they've filmed so much stuff, and it's like let's problem just is, be more creative with the money. But the then again, is, what's, they know what they're making. They're not making something amazing, so I guess they, they probably don't give a fuck either. Well, one of the problems is is that. You know, Leprechaun 3, although not amazing film, it was fun. You know, it was in Vegas, the land of money, and you put the Leprechaun in it, there's gold, people are greedy in Vegas. That you know, It's fun, and they had a good idea. It feels like somebody just said, the next one's got to be in space, and they said, great, let's do it. But they didn't really have an idea about what that meant, because the story is so bad. Uh, it just didn't... <laughs> It was so bad that it dragged on for so long. It should have been... If you put the Leprechaun in space, you could have some really funny things going on. You could parody a ton of space movies. Yeah. You know, he could have said, like, get your damn dirty hands off my gold, like Planet of the Apes. He could have done, like, an alien... In fact, there was an alien thing, I think, in this. Didn't something burst out of somebody at one point? Yeah. Leprechaun burst out of that guy's cock. Do you remember? That was so weird. What the fuck was going on? The leprechaun. He gets so, basically. He's, he's, so he pisses on the leprechaun's and the, body. And, the, and it somehow goes into his urethra. I've got a note somewhere that does say, have I just seen a man come out of a leprechaun's u- No, a leprechaun, a leprechaun come, come out, out of a man's, man's urethra. Yeah, that's right. And it's just like, that is not something I've never expected to see in this. And you've got that Brundle fight thing at the end. You've, you've got that Doctor Who looking half robot motherfucker. At, at this point, we're selling this to the audience, you know. The People listeners. are like going, why are these two dissing it? I'm going to go watch this. Now, the other thing is, and what I'm a bit annoyed about is, I couldn't fucking find this film anywhere. So I ended up having to rent it from YouTube <laughs> for £3.50. <laughs> Which I'll never see again. Mm. And, 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 and Gab, you know what I positive I am about things. Mm. I can go watch Sharknado 8. I can go watch Sharkenstein. I can watch Critters 3 and still find things positive. I'm struggling to find a lot of positives about this film. Other than, oh, baby, oh, baby. Yeah. And, and a, 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 a <laughs> leprechaun coming out of a man's urethra. And some good practical effect. I had a note that says... <coughs> 23 minutes in you know it's it's taken a while I've got a then uh, I've got okay I've got yeah, only 23 minutes in it feels like forever it's only six minutes later I went how is this only 30 minutes in <laughs> <laughs> because the last 40 minutes is them doing the same thing which is them running from room to room I don't remember any of this film and fighting I'm, the leprechaun <sighs> Well, look, let me, let's go through the trivia. There's not a lot of trivia. But let's go through that. Yeah, I, I, I'll give you some of my notes as I find interesting things. Okay, well, according to Dave Trippett, the executive in who, charge who of production... Who had nunchucks? Did the leprechaun have nunchucks? Uh, one of the guy, one of the Marines had nunchucks at one point. Oh, no, it's that weirdy weird bit when a Sarge is uh, in drag. Yeah. And he's no. singing and dancing, and then he pulls out leprechaun. Um, so, pulls out leprechauns. Pulls out nunchucks. So the leprechaun. That's weird. Makes him become a drag queen. I, I didn't. I don't. I didn't even understand that. I didn't understand if that was a homophobic thing that they were going for. I, I don't understand. know. I don't know. But yeah, you had the Sarge with his metal head in drag with nunchucks. Do you know when they? Oh my god! That blown up leprechaun. 
the, the, a couple of the shots of the burn up leprechaun before they had restaged it so the camera's super low and it's a wide lens so you look up and it looks really big um they've just blown it up they've literally just blown up and, and nowadays when you have 4k and 6k everyone's going oh you could have 4k cameras because then when you've got the angle and you don't like that angle you can zoom in and it keeps the quality which it does this is because it's 4k resolution it's got a lot more k's going on there um where this back in the day wasn't so much so they just blew up the leprechaun they've literally just zoomed in and put it on top and it looks so bad because it's yeah. all really de degraded but badly degraded and you're like not oh, even pixelated no. just yeah. like really like, it's like really cheap like oh it's the same you do as a template for where it's got to be the rule shot's got to go on top it's like oh my god what are you doing guys so this might explain where this film came from. So the first bit of trivia is that Dave Trippett, the executive in charge of production for the first three Leprechaun movies, says that the film started as a spoof of Apollo 13. Somebody in Trimark saw the promo art for Apollo 13 and said to somebody, hey, replace Tom Hanks' face with the Leprechaun's face. That started being circulated around the office. Next thing you know, money was on the table. What? What? <laughs> You need a plot. Are they? Are you saying this film didn't have a plot, Cal? I love the fact. Well, you did, I guess. Um, I love the fact later on, for no reason, a woman's trousers are ripped off, so she's running around in her pants. Uh, that was absolutely L ludicrous. literally no reason at all. Uh, this hand, Leprechaun's hand, comes down and just manages just somehow to pull her trousers off, so she's running around with her pants. She's like the hero as well. And it's so degrading for her. All of a sudden, she's just in her underwear. Why do you need to be in her underwear? Well, and there's like, there's a, quite a lot of sex in this as well, isn't there? Yeah, there's some boobs and stuff. Um, they never call him the leprechaun, as I've said. They, they either call him the alien, the monster, the bastard, or the alien bastard, or the alien monster. I tell you what's really disturbing when you get the uh, the boss guy who's just literally if like I'm gonna try and visualise this for you guys. So if you're driving down a road, try not to get, try not to just shut your eyes and imagine this. You might just veer off. It's the guy's in a wheelchair, he's all robot, but like his one of his arms is all and hand is all normal skin and flesh, but from the under the armpit up to the opposite shoulder of the hand, which is usable, is is all is the only thing, and his head is all which is flesh and skin. The rest it's robots. It's quite disturbing. They're, they put a gag ball on him. I was like, oh my god, that's just taking the disturbing level to a high new level. <laughs> We're now in. Let's turn this up to eleven, but it only goes to ten. This one goes to eleven. This is this was this is our spinal tap moment of disturbingness for this. I was just like, what the shit? There's an, a weird bit of trivia about this, which is the main guy, one of the main Marines, who looked a bit like Sylvester Stallone. I don't know if you remember the guy I'm talking about. Um, yes, I do because know. he looks so much like Sylvester Stallone. I'm looking at pictures. Because he looks so much like him, the director Brian Trenchard Smith said, right up until day one of shooting, I want you to do an impression of Stallone, and we're gonna, you know, that's gonna be the thing that's gonna make people want to watch this. But he was told, drop the idea because Stallone will probably sue. Of course he will. So he ended up just like hiring this guy who looked like Stallone, and then he didn't even do a Stallone accent. He just acted. Yeah. So weird. Um, <laughs> yeah, as I mentioned earlier, I touched on this earlier, but the director uh, said, I'm really disappointed with the effects. They're sub-PlayStation effects. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, they're terrible. Yeah. That weird, the, the 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 dude who's the weird, uh, what is it? A uh, uh, fly? No, it's not a fly. Is it a spider thing? Spider. Yeah, he's person. like spider that's scorpion just so man. So creepy, and that's all actual prosthetics. A lot of that. Um, why again, did they have like to drop that in? No, that must have cost so much of the budget. But that was like watching an episode of Red Dwarf, which, and I'm not dissing Red Dwarf. Red Dwarf had some brilliant practical effects because they were a very low budget science fiction comedy. But it was like I was watching. An episode of Red Dwarf at times, like not a movie. Do you know what I mean? Like what it's the weird, guys? but it just went on and on and on. Um, the, do you mean the Rambo guy? Do you mean the guy who looks like Christian Bale's knockoff brother? Well, no. The main guy that uh, his name is um, 
what's his name? Uh, Brent Jasmer. Right. Oh, right. Uh, no, no. You should. I thought you meant the other guy who looks really like a poor man's Christian Bale. Yeah, I know that guy as well. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's um. <laughs> I don't know. I struggle to recommend this one to our listeners. So the third one, I would say. Yeah, I'd even say if I give it a thumbs up. Or I, I'd give it a thumbs up as long as you've what, got a few beers. Uh, yeah, if you've got a few beers or mates around, and if you like the first two, you'll probably get a kick out of the third one. It's not as good as the first or second one, but it's still I'll decent. Give it a, I'll give the third one a pass. I'll give it yeah. that. Yeah. This one I can't recommend. Do not go near it. If you're a completist, you're going to probably check it out. If uh, you know, and it should have been so fun because it's in space. You know, why can all... it not be fun? It was. It was trying to be more serious than it should have been. It's... That's the problem, Gav. It, it took itself too seriously. It almost really did. It, it started off like proper with like a score and everything. And the score was I all serious. Need... I didn't need loads of sex. I didn't need loads of, like, Marines being badasses. What I needed was Warwick Davis killing you while singing a little rhyme about how he's killing you and yeah. people were trying to get his gold. Yeah. Put that in a spaceship. Yeah. I'd be all over that. But instead, we got Scorpion Tarantula Man, half robot man in a wheelchair, space sex, it's alien just, princesses, it's just weird. lightsabers. There's no reason why it's in space, though, is there? There's not, 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 you know anything it's just we're in space just deal with it you live with that the film set in 2096 okay so that's that's the future we're looking at yep that's probably one of our shortest reviews i would say yeah yeah uh don't watch it i i probably would agree with you i can't believe okay so that's deprecon 4 so is that the worst scored on IMDb? Now, obviously, you shouldn't like you should watch movies for yourself. But every time I've ever watched a movie, generally, I can guess the IMDb rating of, of what I think the movie is, but of my own opinion, of when I've finished watching it. And generally, it's on the money. So that's three point five. What are the others like? You got Let's Leprechaun Three is five. Leprechaun Two is four point six. Leprechaun in the Hood's three point seven. God's sake. Leprechaun 6. Which one would... Leprechaun 6? Yeah, How that's Leprechaun Back there? to the Hood. How many is there? That's the six of them. That's the sixth one. Leprechaun Back to the Hood, that one's called. <sighs> so next year we'll be covering five and six. I don't know which one's which. So there's Leprechaun in the Hood, followed by Leprechaun Back to the Hood. And that's the ones we're doing. That's next year we'll be doing those two. So that so we're doing Leprechaun and Hood gets a three point seven. Oh great. And which one which is Leprechaun for uh so which one was that? That's for three. Oh, so we need so we're doing Leprechaun in the Hood and Leprechaun in the Hood two. That's it. Yeah. yeah. What's all this Leprechaun Returns, Leprechaun so Origins? Le- Leprechaun came out um it was a remake, really bad remake, which came out about five years ago. What was that? The, the, what, The Origins? Or, uh, what are these yeah, movies? They're, they're terrible. Are they, are they part of the, the franchise, though? There is one of them that follows directly on and even talks about Jennifer Aniston's character, and so that one's really need, good. Do we need to watch these, then? Potentially. Oh. Right, okay. I mean, if you really want to, I was only going to do the original ones, but... Oh, no, 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 it's fine, we don't have to. I think we should probably stop after next year. I think, look, if if someone really, really, really wants to put us through it, they're they're gonna have to like um, to know. I'm thinking about um for come Easter, and give you a sexy massage or something. I'm thinking about Easter in two years' time. We might start the Hellraiser movies for the hell of it, and uh, just work our way through two of those every year. Yeah. Trouble yeah. is, there's about twelve of those movies or something ridiculous. Oh, yeah, they could get bad. The first Hellraiser's good though. But hey, Leprechaun 4, don't watch it. Don't watch that movie. Um, I'm sorry if you watched it in prep for this podcast. You might have liked it. Tell us what you think. Always if tell us what you think. If you do like it, just give us a shout on Instagram I gave it, or Twitter. I, I or gave Facebook. it a 2 out of 10. Not a, not a 1, I give it a 2. Uh, I'll give it a 1. Hmm? Uh, Bill? Bill? <laughs> What's this? Hello, Bill. Oh, okay. It's Border of the Strange, Gav. 
Okay then. All right then. Take it away, my friend. Let's do it. Hi, welcome back to World of the Strange. Well, it's the word of the strange star, laddie. Have you ever noticed? I haven't said shit. It's all just always a silent one, isn't it? I haven't done any impressions at all. You've done very well, actually. I've been very, very reserved. You've been excellent. What a great example you've set on our Easter episode. Exactly. Exactly. Excellent. So... For World of the Strange, um, the first thing I wanted to do was I whipped out my mm-hmm. my folklore and oh, fairies CD-ROM from 1995. Oh, brilliant. Did it give you some really bad 8-bit graphic uh, information? It does. It does indeed. I found it in a pawn shop in Vegas, and <laughs> um, it's given me some facts on leprechauns, real facts on real leprechauns, You want, if you want to hear them. Okay. Here we go. Word of the Strange. Thanks very much, Bill, as always. For, Thanks, Bill. For coming in here and doing this. Big, b- big Billy style. Big Billy. Don't don't bring it up. Bill Smith. Because B- Bill Murray's fuming about Will Smith. Oh. He's friends did, with Chris did, Rock. Did you see... I was going to say, did you see Rock's... The Rock's expression? Seen another Rock get hit. Ooh. I once saw a picture of Kid Rock, The Rock, and Chris Rock all stood together, and somebody put underneath, look at this rock formation. Awesome. And yeah, I thought, yeah. that is just fucking brilliant. It is a rock formation. <laughs> but also, do you think they all stood there going, hey, I'm Kid Rock, and The Rock's like, oh, I'm The Rock, and then Chris Rock's like, I'm Chris Rock! I presume it had been Chris Rock at first realised yeah, it, it and cracked the joke. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Um, number one on my CD-ROM. Let me just load it up. Here we go. Uh, number one fact: leprechauns are actually fairies. Leprechauns are fairies. Okay. Yes. So they're they're, so, they're they're in the world of the preternatural. They are. They might not match your initial idea of what a fairy is, but they're considered part of the fairy family. Okay. Like other fairies, they're small in size and prone to mischief. Right. They're miniature men that are said to be descendants of Tuatha de Danon, a group of magical beings that served under the Gaelic goddess Danu. And according to legend, oh, it's just loading, hang on a sec. Beep, Sorry. Beep, 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 Thanks. According to legend, this mythical group lived in Ireland long before humans inhabited the land. Okay, so they came from the the land before the humans roamed it. Mm. Mm. Now, here's an interesting fact. Number two, there are no no such thing as a female leprechaun. Oh no! So uh, are they uh, are they bumming each other? I don't know. I don't think they're intersex, really. I reckon it's, it's a bit like Bad Santa, isn't it, Leprechaun? I reckon he's a bit dirty and seedy. Well, he's always trying to bang some girl in every film, isn't he? Yeah, so he's definitely into, into shaking. Yeah. But surely he'd like to like make a little. Well, in, in number leprechaun. two, I think. How, it was, do they, want... how do they reproduce then? Well, in number two, he wants to um, impregnate a human woman, doesn't he? Oh, and then, and then a little male <laughs> leprechaun would come out. Yeah. Mm. It, well, as a way of explaining why there's no record of any female leprechauns and therefore no way to procreate in, tra- in the traditional sense, some sources claim mm, yeah. that leprechauns are the unwanted children of the fairy community, and as a result, they're just always grouchy, untrusting, and solitary creatures. So it might be a sad story for them. Oh, are, we say, are you saying we need to be sad for the leprechauns? I think we might need to be nicer to them. Okay. Fact number three. There is a leprechaun colony, a real leprechaun colony in Portland, Oregon. Really? Yes. Would you like to hear the story? Yes. After noticing a small circular hole in concrete... A glory hole. Oh, is that what it was? That's probably a glory hole. Where a light pole was meant to be, a journalist named... Dick Fagan. It's all coming together with this glory hole. 
took it upon himself to make use of it. Oh. <laughs> he first added flowers and a <laughs> tiny sign, a tiny sign that proclaimed it's the world's smallest park. Okay. He began he began to write stories about the spot in a newspaper column. He detailed the adventures of a small leprechaun colony led right. by a leader that only the journalist could see. Right. The, the garden called Mill Ends Park became an official city park on St. Patrick's Day in 1976. And over the many years, people have added miniature additions like a tiny swimming pool complete with a tiny diving board. <laughs> How tiny are we speaking? I don't understand. It's about the size of uh, the top of a bucket. Wow. Yeah. It's so weird. You know, like a flea circus. People used to say, I've got a flea circus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's a like matchbox style. Yeah. 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 That's so weird. It's weird, isn't it? It's all on the CD-ROM, so it must be true. They haven't got much to do there, I guess. Just look at it, take a picture of it, and say you've seen it, I suppose. Yeah. It's like when you go and see the biggest ball of elastic bands in the world. Yeah. What are you going to do? You take a picture of it, and then that's it. You've seen it, really. In Portland, Oregon, the last two times we've had short films play at festivals. It's always been in Portland, Oregon, at the H.P. Lovecraft Festival. Must be something to do with the luck I of the Irish. Must be. To be sure. That's my first one. There you go. Leprechaun. Fact number four. Leprechaun means small body. Okay. It's believed to be a variation of the Middle Irish word luchipan, which means small body. Okay. There we go. Fact number five. They're not always green. Sometimes leprechauns are red. Okay. Although they're little Irishmen and now synonymous with the colour green, they weren't always early accounts of leprechauns. Early accounts, like someone's actually got photos of them. Um, Describe them as wearing red. And they didn't just wear top hats. They sometimes wore triangular-shaped hats. <laughs> Jesus me. Christ. What's I'm going on? I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, I sneezed that up my ribs. <laughs> the- <laughs> Did a leprechaun just burst out of your urethra then? <laughs> I think I've just burped a leprechaun. <laughs> Ow. Oh, carry on. Sorry, you listeners. I sneezed. I, I, I didn't... Oh, I don't normally really, sneeze on air. It really scared me. Oh, um, yes, so, so they, they wear red and they wear triangular-shaped hats. Okay. Now, this next fact, fact number six, is very interesting. There is another type of leprechaun. It's a cousin to the leprechaun called the chloricorn. I've never heard of it. They're always red. They're rambunctious. They're little cousins. And they share many characteristics with the leprechaun. These beings are always described as drunk and surly. And they're often seen in stories riding animals at night. (laughs) Or... (laughs) Or clearing out entire wine cellars. <laughs> Fucking I love up. them. I, I think they're amazing. <laughs> Some people explain that these troublemakers, they're the night form of leprechauns take, after a hard day's work. Take the booze away and they're completely different. I'll bet you anything. All that anger would go. So people think that these are the night version of the leprechauns. After they worked hard, they ride an animal and wipe out your wine cellar. I love it. After we've worked hard, we ride animals. We wipe out cellars. It's believed that normal leprechauns can become so drunk and tipsy, they transform into these chloricorns, an entirely different species. That's just the booze talking. That's when they get drunk. Who's coming up with this shit? (laughs) Yeah, who is it? Who's Who's writing writing this? this? Who's Who's got got people in lockdown? That's what's going on. Who's programmed this fucking CD-ROM that I'm looking at right now? (laughs) Fact number seven, leprechauns are the bankers and cobblers of the fairy world. They make the shoes and keep the money. Well, that's why he's always obsessed with the shoes in the films, isn't it? Ah, oh, you shiny little shoes. Let me polish them up good for you. Oh, okay, so it's a trade through the leprechaun generations. Yeah. And so they're, no- they're known for their money. And being stingy. But apparently there's a lot of money in cobbling. So, if we take it back to the first leprechaun, it's just someone went, oh, I've got to find a job. Oh, I'll, do, I'll clean your shoes for you, squire. You know. 
They're always said to have a hammer and shoe, a hammer and a shoe in a hand. Brilliant. You can always hear them coming by a tapping <laughs> sound that they make. <laughs> What's that? Tap, 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 tap. Oh! <laughs> but they also apparently protect the treasure of the entire fairy world. Okay. So they're very, uh, you know, they hoard all that money and all those gems, gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fact number eight, we all knew this one. Leprechauns are sneaky. Sneaky little motherfuckers. Stories of people trying to steal their gold. But the rule is, if you're lucky enough to catch a leprechaun, you can never take your eyes off him or he'll disappear. Oh, that old chestnut. In one report, I love this, in a report, a man managed to catch a leprechaun and he forced the fairy to tell him the location of his treasure. Mm. He pointed to a tree. The man was delighted. He tied a red bandana around the branch, ran home to get a shovel. And when he came back to the forest, every single tree, every single branch had a red bandana around it. Really? Little bastards. Little bastards. They can be generous, though, if you're kind to them. Fact number nine, they can be generous if you're kind to them. Okay. As a result of this, leprechauns are usually distrustful and secretive because everyone's after their gold. Yeah, that's what happens when you get into coming to money, isn't it? It's better just not to have any. But there is another report of a dad. I love these reports. <laughs> yeah. I mean, who's fucking again? Who's interviewing these people? Who's taking down the reports in a, in a normal, sensible <laughs> manner without laughing? In one report, a man who was down on his luck said. He offered a leprechaun to ride on his horse. The leprechaun said, "Yes, please." And in return, he gave. He turned his. Oh, he filled his entire castle with gold. Come on. He's not. He's not that bad. Doing bad. If you've got a whole castle. He's not down on his luck, is he? He's got a horse. I've he's, got a fucking castle. So he's walking on, going, "Oh, got no money. Oh, there's a leprechaun. Do you want to ride? Because you've got little legs. It might take you longer to walk. You can get on my horse if you like." Now, we've covered this story before, this next fact. Number 10. Someone found the remains of an actual leprechaun in 1989. Do you remember we covered this? Kinda. They found a little skeleton in a little tiny suit with some gold coins. Yeah, that's right. And it, yeah. was, it was fake, though, wasn't it? Well, we don't know. No, it's never been... What was it then? Just a picture of it that came up? Yeah, someone found it and, uh, and they dug it up and said, like, here's a little mini... Skeleton with some clothes and well, some gold. They must have done, done some sort of <laughs> test of the skeleton, surely. Don't you believe in this shit, guys? No. <laughs> Fact number 11. Le leprechauns are protected under European law. Oh, really? Apparently, according to EU law, there are 236 leprechauns still living in the caverns. What are they on about? Of Slayer Why is this even in official paperwork? This is an EU. The EU have granted heritage to the to the last 236 leprechauns, who now have a protected sanctuary within the mountains. Billy, have you got a report for me? Yep, done that. Right, Bob, what are you up to? Just been doing this thing. Just <laughs> just been working out all these. Have things. you been taking magic mushrooms again? No, 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 no. So I've just been spending me a, morning, a whole morning just like typing this up for the official EU the regulations. EU, right, yeah. because the Prime Minister is going to be here in a minute and he's going, no, 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 what have you, what have you got in it? What have you been working on? They're, just te they're picking you at random today. It's your desk. What? What, what are you working on? Brilliant. Leprechauns are real. Yeah. There are types, there is a species of a leprechaun that can live underwater. This is number 12. They live underwater. They live underwater. And they're like mermaids. They drag people down to their underwater lair and drain them. They're sexy like mermaids. They're not as sexy as mermaids. Do you think mermaids are sexy? I mean, I like fish fingers. Uh, but you can't do that, though, can you? Oh, what? I didn't mean that that. Of course you did. Terrible innuendos, but um, you know, would you would you 
kiss her? I don't know why she could do it. Well, you can't. I don't know. I'm a married man. Would you kiss a mermaid? You can, I'm a, I don't think Alice is going to be offended if she listens to this one day and there's me asking you, would you kiss a mermaid? No, because I think mermaids lead you to your doom, don't they? I guess so. What, you sort of follow them? Go do a little bit of swimming with them? Hmm. I don't want. To, I don't want to be involved with the mermaid. No, might get comp code. No, might get crabs. No, could do. Number thirteen, leprechauns may be gods. Leprechauns may be gods, yeah. right? The god of laughter. The god of shoes. The god of shoes. Who's who's writing all this? <laughs> Is that my CD wrong? Microsoft, 1993. Okay. Finally, the last fact on here is how to make a leprechaun trap. Okay, how do you do that? It's basically gets a shoe, <laughs> you get a shoe box and a bit of string, and you paint it green. That's what it says to do. Okay. Good luck. So that's my leprechaun facts. Okay. That's very good. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Let me just Golf unload clap. the CD ROM. Golf clap. All right. Just taking the CD out. There we go. I might play uh, Doom later on on this CD player. Um, now, I've got one more story. Yeah. My wife sent me this. She always does. She's always very good at... Oh, this would be good for World of the Strange. Sometimes she sent me the one about the woman who wet her husband's ashes. Do you remember that one? Oh, oh. God. That was awful. So let me read you the headline, and then we'll get into this. Corpse on the way to the funeral home flies out of the van in a multi-car pile-up involving a horse. Oh, my God. It's like a police <laughs> academy. <laughs> <laughs> what the shit? Yeah, the body was being taken from a hospital to a from a from a hospital to a funeral home when the strange car accident occurred in uh, occurred in New Jersey, which also involved a horse being spotted eating grass on the roadside. Let's get into this because this sounds intriguing, doesn't it? It does. Now I've not read this through, as I often don't. So. You know, I'll take your questions, but I don't always have the answers, perhaps till a bit later on in the story, all right? All right. So, a corpse went flying out of a van and a flying across a US highway during a serious pileup. So straight away, <laughs> I'm picturing that scene in Bad Boys 2. <laughs> Bad Boys 2, across. where all the bodies have been thrown at the back of that van, at Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. Um... The incident that happened in New Jersey involved five cars, and the body was being transported from a hospital to a funeral home. It fell out of the Honda Odyssey van, which became caught up in the accident. The police department said the body was wrapped in a sheet on a stretcher. It was thankfully unharmed during the, during the crash. That's good to know. Did it stay on the, the, the stretcher and like, wheeled off down the road? Like, um... Like in uh, 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 the end of uh, the burbs or something. The burbs. I was going to say like the burbs. Ah! Yeah. Um, well, it happened when a pickup truck pulling a horse trailer crashed into the back of a Jeep Wrangler. Right. Three people ended up in hospital. No one was seriously injured. Okay. The horse in the trailer was unhurt, but walked out of the trailer yeah. completely unscathed. Yeah. Spotted some grass on the side of the road. Just started eating that. So yeah. you got a body flying across the the highway. The horse, okay. A horse looks <laughs> up to see a body, and then just goes back to eating its grass. <laughs> oh, I love that the horse just walked out and was like, "Cool, mm, there's some grass." grass. <laughs> so good, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so the driver of the white jeep was a lady called Brittany. Brittany says, "It always comes to a dead stop by the Garden State." I have a habit of looking in my rear window when I break, and suddenly I saw a trailer, a trailer flying across the uh, road and not slowing down. At that second, everything happened at once. I heard loud tyre screeching, lots of crashes, there was a body flying across the road. <laughs> By the time I had looked around, I noticed a horse had appeared out of nowhere <laughs> and was eating grass near my car. 
I was hit so hard that my rear end was covered in glass. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't think she meant it like that. <laughs> she was hit so hard that her rear end was covered in glass. Um, I hit my head and my nose on the steering wheel. I couldn't move. It was like a dream. It was so scary. So I just sat there watching the horse eat. <laughs> Oh, I just watch that then. Just a bit of comfort while you're there Look waiting. It, as, as you just slowly move to the left and see the wheel, the, the, the stretcher just go by the body. You no details. No details on who the corpse was or how they died have been given. That's the end of the news story. I hope when I die, I have an adventure. <laughs> that is a hell of an adventure for a dead body, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's a bit like um, Weekend at Bernie's. It is. It's just like that. Yeah. Um, this this only happened about a week ago, as we record this. Amazing. So up to date there. Egg, egg amazing. That doesn't make any egg sense. amazing. Doesn't make any sense. Excellent. So uh, there's your leprechaun facts. Thanks, and there's a there's a little spicy one for the end. I love that one. That's flying good. bodies, yeah. flying bodies, and hungry horses. I like it. There we go, Bill. Bill? I think. Should probably get us out of it. Oh, go on then. That's all the time we've got for this week on World of Strange. Next week, though, give me Ira. Hairless pets. Weird. And we're back again. Ooh, episode 120. That was your little oh, wow. St. Patrick's Day slash Easter special. Yes, yes, ladies and gents and non-gender peoples. Yes, we did that for the Easter special um, kind of St. Patrick's Day, really. Um, because we've obviously ran out of the Alien films and the Critter movies. Hmm. So, yeah, uh, avoid Leprechaun 4. Watch 3 if you want. Mm. Get drunk and watch them both. Why not? <sighs> but yeah, but it's all right because by the time you get to uh, part four, you just go to sleep. Yeah, it's all right. If you drink enough. Yeah. So there we go. I did have still have fun though. Like you said, it was actually more fun talking about Liverpool Four than yeah, it was watching there it. There's some boobs in it, you know. Yeah, you know. Now the next episode is episode 121, Gav. It's your birthday. It's, it's your birthday. birthday episode. So I. Oh yes, I do remember now. I do. Do, I do, do remember. I do remember. So it's my birthday, and I'm doing an Arnold. I can't wait. Episode. <laughs> We're going to be looking at Total Recall. Yeah. And the Running Man. I can't wait. Two Arnold Schwarzenegger classic science fiction horrors, and they are horror because there is definitely horror elements to them. You know, Ryan, King Ryan, Ryan, Man, yeah, that, yeah, Running Man, written by Stephen King, and a lot of gore, a lot of terrible death in it. And Total Recall is just Paul Verhoeven. It did Robocop. Oh man, that's a good movie. And there's a woman with three boobs in it, Gab. You'll love that. Can't wait. Absolutely brilliant. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to do for that episode. And then I'm going to tell now, episode 122. Mm. We're going back to the classics. Okay. What are we Demon, doing? Demons and Demons 2. We're doing what? Demons. Demons, demons and Demons 1 and Demons 2. Oh, yeah, baby. Okay, cool. Can you believe we've never covered Demons? Uh, yeah, well, I can, actually, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Demons and Demons 2 after that. So that's your next couple of episodes. Sorry about the Leprechaun. You know, they weren't that great. But we're making... <laughs> no. We're coming back strong with some Arnie I, movies. I think. Demon. I think we're going to uh, enjoy talking about the Arnie ones, and that's just oh, going to be full yeah. of shit impressions. <laughs> now, one thing I wanted to mention because we're going to talk about our patrons, etc., soon. But I did want to give a shout out to somebody. Yeah. We we had a lovely comment on Twitter. Uh, not on Twitter. On Instagram. Sorry. From Justin, aka the Horror Justin. Go to Instagram, just type in the Horror Justin, all one word. Thanks, Justin. Thanks, Justin, so much. I'm going to read out what he said. It was really lovely. Uh, he said, uh, It is the age of the comfort listen, and I find few things more comforting than listening to two 
genuine friends discuss all things horror, movie, and personal life related on the podcast on Haunted Hill. And that was so lovely. Yeah, it was really nice. Thank we're you very, very, very really touched by that. Yeah, it's nice, it's nice to know that people like us when we're talking shit. If you want to leave us a review, guys, I've said it every episode, please do. There's many places to do it. Wherever you listen to us now, there's probably a way to... Yeah, and f- Justin, throw that one on a review. <laughs> chuck it on. Yeah, ch- chuck it on paste. a review. Yeah. Oh, please do. Yes, we can't copy and paste it because it looks bad if we're just saying how good we are. Imagine if we wrote our own reviews. We could do. We could just write loads and loads of our own reviews. We are geniuses. We are amazing. Write that down. <laughs> five out of five. I think we're fucking cool. <laughs> I'm sure they don't allow Imagine that. if we gave ourselves a shit review, though. That'd be even better. Terrible. Don't bother. The best show, the best episode was the Leprechaun 3 and 4 one. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than the Critters episode. Oh, I know. I upset an audience uh, listener, didn't I? You did. Sorry, listener. I do apologise. <laughs> I wonder <laughs> if you're still with us. No, they've gone. I think they've passed. They left about six years ago. Yeah, they hopped off the ship and jumped on another. So... Yep. That's what's happening next. That's what we've done. Shall I wrap up with a bit of admin? Do it. Excellent. Well, we're the podcast on Haunted Hill. Thank you for listening. We're a proud member of Legion Podcast Network. If you want to know about more about them, go to legionpodcast.com. You, from there, you can find out about all the other shows that are on the network, not just us. There's many other shows. Um, you can find out more about us on Facebook. You can interact with us on there. Just type in the podcast on Haunted Hill. You can also go on the Legion Facebook page as well. Again, you can chat to everybody on there. Everybody's very friendly, open. You can message us. You can also uh, email us, the podcast on Haunted Hill at Outlook.com. Uh, Don Collier, one of our patrons, if you want to email me on there, um, I have messaged you. I know you want to get your T-shirt um, and for some reason, I don't think our patron messages are working when they when I send them back to you. I'm getting them from you, but I don't think you're getting them from us. So hit us up on that. Or uh, give us a, give us an email address. We can contact you directly. Yeah, just any a different email Maybe. address, anything really. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so that's that. But also, I didn't uh, find out the sizes. You asked me the colours and sizes, did I? I'd say just uh, just tell us, give us like your first and second choice T-shirts, and uh, then I'll just rumble through the box. White, grey, or baby blue, and yeah, <clears throat> just tell us what size you want. Mm. Uh, we are available to listen to on all podcast platforms, really, including Spotify, YouTube, wherever you're listening to this right now. And most of those, as I've said, have a space that you can review us or rate us. It'd be lovely if you guys could do that. Um, we're also yeah, on please. Twitter. Twitter is at Haunted Podcast, and Instagram, which Justin tagged us on, was the podcast on Haunted Hill Insta, all one word. Yep. So even if you want to chuck us a message on there, we love hearing from people. We've been going eight years. We love hearing from people because yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Long could time. be that we're, we're just shouting into the void and no one's listening. You never know. But well, Justin's listening. Thank you, Justin. Mm. And our patrons are listening. Sarah's we'll come listening. to them in a moment. My wife isn't. <laughs> Alice, if you're listening, <laughs> <laughs> she's not listening. <laughs> You are? She just stuck her head in the door. She didn't really. Uh, we've also got our production company, our film production company called deadbolfilms.com. We're actually just prepping a short film, a new short film. New short film. I, I showed you, I sent you a picture, didn't I? We got a little, a little face. A little face. I won't say any more. No. I won't say any more. We creepy. also, uh, if you if you jump on deadbottlefilms.com, you can find out about all the podcasts that are on the network, which at the moment is two, this one and Gav's podcast, which is also called... High Strangers Podcast. High Strangers Podcast, True Sarah Crime. Nine. True Crime, yes. True Crime, mate, because tomorrow we're recording a new one about an Australian serial killer. Oh, is this the Lady Leatherface? Lady Leatherface. <laughs> oh, Sounds yeah. lovely. Um, also, within Deadpool Films, not only the podcasts, there's also short films, feature films, and comics. And in fact, the third Abyssal Albion comic is... Did not is... make its fund. Did it not? No. So uh, Tom's going to try it again at the end of the year, I think, or later in the year. Cause there we're, you go, guys. We're, we're just working on this uh, short film. Keep your keep your eyes open for that one and yeah. give give more money. <laughs> the first two were amazing. Yeah. The first two comics were amazing. 
um, and you get loads of extras if you obviously if you pledge more you get loads more like badges and t-shirts and stuff I was wearing my Abyssal Albion t-shirt the other day in fact. oh cool finally patron if you really want to support us and you don't have to we don't beg but if you really want to you can go on patron and you can donate X amount per month really right. the, amount, the amount is up to you um but if you do that, you get access to exclusive content such as bonus episodes. Our old episodes are gradually being released every Friday. I just I just added episode twenty four, um, so wow. working through them all very slowly weekly. We, um, we do need to do some more Patreon content, you and I. We do indeed. We do indeed. We're, we're, we're getting a new episode out. And if you do become a patron, you do get a T-shirt as well, which we'll send you no matter where you live in the world. Um, we'll send it over to you. Um, so Don, yeah, hit us up. Um, I'll, I'll try your, your email address for my personal one, maybe. Maybe that'll be the way to do it. But as always, patrons, I've got to mention you all by name because we love you all so, so much. And thank you all so, so much. Don't me, Kevin. Indeed, we do. We love you very, very, very much. Thank you so much. So thank you so much to Don Collier, Matthew Godley, Jamie Jenkins, Kevin S5, Sarah Kay, Rachel, R. Jamie McCready, and Lex Boo. Thank you so, so much. We love Thank you, you guys. We love you. We love you. But we love you all listeners anyway, um, even if you're not a patron, because you're just listening to us, and we appreciate that. Yeah. Even when we review Leprechaun 3 and 4, which... I know, I know. ...aren't the best. Nah. But 3 was all right, 4 was terrible. Fucking terrible. Yeah. Well, that's it. That's it. It's a good night from Warwick Davis. It is. It's a good night from uh, Warwick Davis coming out of a man's urethra dressed as a oh, leprechaun. Jesus, Jesus weird. Christ. Really weird. It's a good night from a sex robot electrocuting a casino boss to death. It's a good night from a, a, a spider man. Oh. Weird thing. And it is sadly a good night from Bruce Willis, who's going to be retiring from acting. Well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and in the, in the words of Will Smith. Keep my wife's name out of your fucking mouth. Yes. Interesting. Good night from me. Good night from you. Good night from Good night you. from the haunted hill. Oh. And uh, don't forget to lock your doors and windows because there might be creepy things out there trying to get in. And check under the bed and in the cupboard before you go to sleep because I might just be lurking. Wear your metal pants. Good night. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the podcast on Haunted Hill. We will be back again real soon.